Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Farmer. Plant strange fire at the beginning and sell devil fruits. Chapter 21. Zhu Daijin took the mask and couldn't figure out the reason no matter how hard he looked at it. The white-haired young man asked. Brother Jun, what should we do next? I think this is a warning from the Black Dragon Gang. Zhu Daijin slapped the table angrily. This time they dare to send a stupid old man to destroy my place. Next time, I dare to send normal people to wipe my neck. Take two deep breaths and put the smiling mask into your arms. But there are more important things right now. Tilan, the military attaché captain who has just been promoted to the city bureau, invites me to dinner. Crazy wolf, please accompany me for a while. Quote. The white-haired young man was a little confused. The purpose of the military attaché's existence is to suppress these underground forces with members who are members of the awakened fighters. Zhu Daijin asked Tilan many times but failed to come out. Why did he take the initiative to meet him this time? The white-haired young man continued. When something goes wrong, there must be a monster, Brother Jun, why don't you bring some more people? Zhu Daijin waved his hand. Why are you bringing so many people here? We are legitimate businessmen. Nane Specialty Seafood Buffet Wine, located in the center of CBD. This is a buffet restaurant, and the ticket is only 128 yuan. The most unique thing here is that there are no scattered platforms. The buffet restaurant with ordinary decoration is full of private rooms. With such a good location and such cheap tickets, the boss would lose money according to common sense. In fact, the boss is not stupid either. Tickets are cheap but hard to get. Reservation required. It's not the best place for company dinners and couples dates. The popularity here is quite high, as can be seen from the large number of luxury cars in the underground garage. It seems that this store is not as simple as an ordinary cafeteria. Zhu Daijin led Crazy Wolf to a private room on the third floor. A beautiful waitress opened the door respectfully and invited the two of them in. Zhu Daijin saw Tilan who had been waiting early and said hello with a smile. Captain Iron. Congratulations. You are young and promising. He took off his coat and handed it to Mad Wolf. Crazy Wolf took out Zhu Daijin's cell phone from his coat with ease and put his own on the waitress's tray. The waitress bowed slightly and left. Zhu Daijin sat on a chair, lit a cigarette, and said with a smile. It turns out that Captain Iron also likes to eat at the buffet. Members of this restaurant provide drinks, and the price is not too high for my family. I have already applied for a membership card for the Iron Captain, so I can come often with my wife and children in the future. Quote. The most interesting thing about this restaurant is that the membership card money can be refunded at any time. In other words, for how much money you need to apply for a card, you can withdraw cash at any time after deducting the service fee. Tilan frowned. No need, I'm here today to introduce you to a friend, and I won't come again in the future. This restaurant is very private and has no surveillance area. Tilan, who did not want to be involved with underground forces, naturally did not want to be blamed. Zhu Daijin said cheerfully. Captain Iron's friends are my Lao Ju's friends. Ah Lang, I will also apply for a 100,000 membership card for Captain Iron's friends soon. Tilan remained silent. No matter what Zhu Daijin said, he just refused to answer the question and drank tea one mouthful at a time. Zhu Daijin murmured in his heart that Tilan obviously didn't want to talk to him, and he only asked him out because of his so-called friends. What kind of friend has such a great reputation? Mad Wolf was a little unhappy. Even if you are the captain of the military attaché group, you can't disrespect your boss like this. He said in a slightly dissatisfied tone. Has the person the Iron Captain made an appointment with arrived? Do you need me to go down and greet him? Squeak. Single quote. At this moment, the door was pushed open, attracting the attention of several people. I'm late, sorry. Zhu Daijin glanced at the person, slightly surprised. The person was wearing a black sportswear with a hood on his head. The most bizarre thing is that he wears a mask of the crying ghost king on his face. Could it be that some official son is hiding his identity? Zhu Daijin stood up in a friendly manner and extended his hand to the visitor. Hello brother, Zhu Daijin, general manager of Daihao Nightclub. Meng Xing nodded lightly, ignored Zhu Daijin's outstretched hand, walked to the main seat and sat down. 
Zhu Daijin was a little embarrassed, the killing intent in his eyes flashed away, and he sat down with a smile. They don't think that Daihao Nightclub is just a nightclub, right? Even the new director Wei from the general administration would not dare to be so rude. Commonly known as the three things a new official takes office. Zhu Daijin suspected that this was a play staged by Tilan to give himself authority. He winked at Mad Wolf. Crazy Wolf understood immediately. The boss cannot act due to his status, so the younger brother should be the one who offends others. Crazy Wolf said in a strange manner. Captain Iron's friend doesn't understand the rules. He's hiding his head and face in a place like this. You. Meng Xing said softly. Go out. Zhu Daijin was a little angry. Crazy Wolf becomes your little brother. Just let him go out. Don't you look at the owner when you beat a dog. Just as he was about to have a seizure, he was shocked to see Tilan stand up obediently and walk towards the door. The background of this masked man is a bit scary. After being shocked, Zhu Daijin looked at Tilan's leaving back playfully. He took out a smiling face mask from his arms and said with a smile. Friend, does this thing look familiar? Crazy Wolf suddenly looked at the mask on Meng Xing's face, and suddenly thought of the madman who destroyed the place last night. He immediately stood in front of Zhu Daijin, with cyclones flowing between his fingers. Crazy Wolf used his own powers to sense the surrounding environment and did not find the ambush awakener. He shook his head at Zhu Daijin. Zhu Daijin felt relieved. Have I ever provoked you? Meng Xing said calmly. It's his own stupidity, and I won't avenge him, so don't be nervous. Zhu Daijin lit a cigarette again. Friend, I don't know what your purpose is, but if you ruined my life, Lao Zhu, you have to give me an explanation. A smile appeared at the corner of Meng Xing's mouth. Put on that mask, take his place, and become my subordinate, that's what I'm giving you. He said this very arrogantly, as if becoming Meng Xing's subordinate was a great gift. Zhu Daijin laughed angrily. Ha ha ha, from the sound of your voice, you must be in your twenties, right? I don't know what method you used to make Tilan surrender to you, but you want to use the same method to deal with me, Lao Tzu, I'm so young. Quote. Crazy Wolf understood it, his fingers were swirling, and his whole body was at an incredible angle, grabbing Meng Xing's throat against the dining table. Meng Xing's whole body suddenly erupted with a burst of green fire. The mad wolf looked horrified and retreated hastily. Looking at his hands again, they were burned. Zhu Daijin's heart sank. Defeat the mad wolf with one move. His strongest bodyguard has a glorious record of killing B-levels. The talent level of this masked man is at least a level. Could it be that in addition to the new director Wei Na from the general administration, there is another A-level existence in Nane City? Zhu Daijin became nervous and immediately realized that the mask in his hand was the symbol of a supernatural organization. He swallowed and watched Meng Xing pacing over. Meng Xing patted Zhu Daijin's tense shoulders, feeling a little relieved in his heart. A few days ago, I didn't even have the qualifications to meet a boss of this level. He took out a cigarette from Zhu Daijin's cigarette case and lit it with Qinglian earth core fire. I am barely a businessman. If you kill my subordinates, you will become my subordinates. This deal is fair. Zhu Daijin swallowed hard holding the extinguished cigarette between his arms, and did not dare to move. Meng Xing put the lit cigarette into Zhu Daijin's mouth. We are all big brothers. Do you want to give me a happy word, or do you want a happy one? Zhu Daijin was the first to smoke the strange cigarette. Zhu Daijin took a deep breath. Brother, what exactly do you need me for? Need money. I can use all the profits of the Daihao nightclub in recent years to make up for my mistake of killing your men. Quote. Just join an extraordinary organization. He was afraid that he would die too soon. In his understanding, extraordinary forces are also made up of people. As long as they are people, they need money, but they need more. Meng Xing shook his head in disappointment. We are all big brothers. Why can't you understand? Then you should die. A blue flame burned violently in his hand. Zhu Daijin didn't expect that this young man would be so decisive in killing and would take action if he disagreed. He kept saying, you understand, you understand. From now on, I, Zhu Daijin, will obey my brothers. Meng Xing was satisfied, took out a devil fruit from his arms and placed it in front of Zhu Daijin. Turn around and return to your seat, pour yourself half a cup of tea. 
If you eat it, you will be one of your own. The mad wolf quickly shouted. Boss, you can't eat it. There's something wrong with this thing. Crazy Wolf's supernatural talent is sea level, wind breath. Not only can he control the power of wind, but he also has a certain sense of spirituality. He felt an extremely strong spirituality in this thing. Zhu Daijin stared at the fruit in front of him with a look of struggle. This was planned from beginning to end. This organization is so terrifying. They used a sea level strongman to come to Daihao nightclub to show off, and then used the reason to force themselves to join them. I don't know what will happen after eating it, but if I don't eat it, I will definitely die. He glanced at Meng Xing secretly and accepted his fate. He picked up the fruit and ate it. He was a man, and he could finish such an unpleasant thing in just a few bites. Zhu Daijin wiped his lips and said in a deep voice. That's it. I've shown my loyalty. From now on, huh. Weapon fruit. Sea level talent. Consumption of spirituality can turn any part of the body into a weapon. Zhu Daijin's tiger eyes widened in horror and looked at Meng Xing in disbelief. Awakened the sea level combat talent. How could he not want to awaken to sea level when he managed to build a Daihao nightclub with D-level combat talent? That fruit just now can make people awaken to sea level. He immediately thought of the old madman who had an affair last night. It was not that this organization was too generous, but that this organization had too many sea levels. Zhu Daijin shivered and lit a cigarette again. Can I ask, why did you choose me instead of the Black Dragon Gang? He thought that the reason why this mysterious organization found him was entirely because of his underground power. Meng Xing chose him just because Yi Yunyan mentioned this person. If Yi Yunyan, the proprietress of the coffee shop, was referring to the Black Dragon Gang boss, the person sitting opposite Meng Xing was someone else. Not random, but random. Meng Xing said. Yi Yunyan from Jinmu Cafe mentioned you before. Zhu Daijin was stunned. Yun Yun. Zhu Jun asked tentatively. She is. Meng Xing said. One of our own. Zhu Daijin felt as if he was struck by lightning, and his heart was filled with turmoil. The woman he fell in love with was actually from an extraordinary organization. Are you looking for death? How dare you provoke such a person? At the same time, my doubts were cleared up. No wonder he couldn't win over a down-and-out lady for so long based on his social status. Zhu Daijin calmed down and asked cautiously. Then who are you? Meng Xing didn't hide it either. Hunter Guild, President. Zhu Daijin immediately stood up from his chair and knelt directly on the ground. From now on, it will all depend on the President's orders. Meng Xing chuckled. The best way to deal with such a tyrant is to make him desperate and helpless. It is easier to completely conquer her in terms of strength and foundation than to deal with a gold worshipper. Meng Xing smiled. I really have a mission for you. The current headquarters of the Hunter Guild is set at Jinmu Cafe. You have so many properties under your name, prepare one as a branch and reward you a lot. Quote. Zhu Daijin immediately said. M Grand Nightclub is a branch of the Hunter Guild. Meng Xing shook his head. The Daihao nightclub is too eye-catching, so choose one that doesn't attract attention. Okay, the details have been sent to your mobile phone. Quote. Meng Xing walked to Zhu Daijin and leaned down, whispering. Don't try to be clever, I have the ability to make you feel worse than death. Zhu Daijin's big beads of sweat dripped on the marble floor, and he didn't dare to raise his head. It wasn't until Meng Xing left the private room that he sat on the ground and gasped for air. This young man put too much pressure on him. Crazy Wolf quickly ran over to help Zhu Daijin. Boss, how are you? Zhu Daijin waved his hand and picked up his phone. The Hunter Guild app had been downloaded. He started to operate. Hunter, slaying the dragon, registration successful. Tip, if you promote the Hunter Guild and reveal your identity as a hunter, you will be killed. Ten minutes later, Zhu Daijin's shoulders began to tremble and his eyes became excited. Developed, developed, the South China Sea will be mine from now on. Tell the engineering department not to demolish the Rasputin bar yet. After that, he stood up and prepared to go back. Zhu Daijin grinned widely when he happened to meet Tilan smoking by the corridor window. No wonder Tilan jumped from a small director to captain of the city bureau's military attaché. Zhu Daijin leaned over with a playful smile. It turns out that you are also a hunter. From now on, we will take care of each other in this one-third of an acre of land in the South China Sea. 
Tilan glanced at Zhu Dejan with disgust. If I catch evidence of your crime, even if the president pleads for mercy, it will be useless. At worst, I will die with you. Zhu Dejan laughed, he was indeed a hunter. Jin Mu Cafe. There aren't many people in this cafe every day, so we can barely make ends meet. The proprietress didn't open this cafe to make a lot of money, and she didn't put much thought into it. Yi Yunyan sat by the window, leaning on her arms to prop up her pretty face, looking at the busy traffic in boredom. Sister Yi, is that Brother Jun's car? Lin Lin's words brought Yi Yunyan back to her senses. She looked towards the gate and saw a Cullinan parked in a formal manner. Two people got down from the top. Zhu Daejin and his personal bodyguard Mad Wolf. Yi Yunyan's beautiful eyebrows frowned instantly, and her displeasure was obvious. Seeing that the visitor had already entered the door, he sighed helplessly and walked towards Zhu Daejin to greet him. As soon as Zhu Daejin entered the door, he greeted the waitress politely. Lin Lin is busy. Yi Yunyan was a little surprised. Zhu Daejin was a little different today. He didn't look like a domineering ruffian. He was even polite to the waiters. What's the new routine? My heart won't die if this guy sleeps with me. Yi Yunyan's heart sank, and she forced a smile. Brother Jun, didn't you say you would pick me up tomorrow for my birthday? Why didn't you say hello when you came today? Zhu Daejin rubbed his hands and said with a smile. Why didn't you tell me your identity earlier? If I had known you were so powerful, I wouldn't have dared. Do you need my cake for a while? One customer asked softly. Lin Lin said quickly. Customer immediately. Zhu Daejin winked at Crazy Wolf. Go, go help get the cake. The crazy wolf just passed away. The little girl Lin Lin was stunned. This cafe has been demonized in Zhu Daejin's heart. Isn't it said that this is the headquarters of the hunter guild? Everyone eating and drinking here is probably a veteran hunter. In fact, those legendary demon level hunters were staring at him from somewhere. Seeing Yi Yunyan's confused face, Zhu Daejin leaned close to him and lowered his voice. Yun Yun, don't take it personally when I did something wrong before. In fact, we are our own people. Yi Yunyan was even more confused, her beautiful eyes blinking, what's going on? Zhu Daejin thought Yi Yunyan was pretending and continued. The president has already met me, you see. Zhu Daejin looked around and stretched out his hand in front of Yi Yunyan. The light passed by and turned into a revolver. Yi Yunyan covered her head in horror. You, brother Jun, have you awakened your dual talents? Zhu Daejin felt that Yi Yunyan was still pretending, and he knew it. When you do things for the Hunter Guild, you have to hide them, and you don't dare to say anything. Yun Yun, if nothing else, my brother is here to apologize to you. Don't take things from the past seriously. Zhu Daejin took out a bank card from his pocket and stuffed it into Yi Yunyan's hand. This is a little thought for the president. His old man is like a dragon but never ends. Could you please help me pass it on to you, sister? Then he took out another bank card. This is for you. I'm really sorry for the harassment during this time. After that, he led Crazy Wolf out of the cafe, not forgetting to give Lin Lin a smile before leaving. Lin Lin was stunned for a moment. Brother Jun, what's going on? Brother Lang, too. I've never seen anything like this before. Did you come here after drinking? There's no smell of alcohol at all. Yi Yunyan held the bank card in her hand and fell into deep thought. The big brother from society comes to your doorstep to send money to apologize. This is someone supporting her behind her back. Who can do this? Could it be that the second brother was released? It's impossible. I won't know that my second brother is back. After thinking for a long time, she couldn't think of any heavyweights who could help her suppress Zudajan. At night, Yi Yunyan was still thinking, who is it? President. Yi Yunyan held a small spoon in her hand and stirred the coffee cup. Welcome, sir, or Blue Mountain coffee and camembert cheese. No, change to fruit mousse cake. Yi Yunyan woke up suddenly. The voice was very familiar. When he raised his eyes, he saw that it was Meng Xing. This younger brother is very cute. He boasts about buying her cafe and helping her get rid of her pursuers. Sometimes a handsome boy can be quite cute when he talks big. Suddenly she thought of something and froze. The shock in her eyes flashed away. No way. Yi Yunyan stood up and waved to Meng Xing. Sir, here. Meng Xing smiled, walked to Yi Yunyan and sat down, taking out his notebook to write and draw. 
Yi Yunyan wanted to ask Zhu Daijin what was going on, but he didn't know what to say. He looked at Meng Zing's slightly green face and smiled to himself. When he could solve linear equations in two variables, this child was still an embryo. How could he have such great strength? Even if his family had a background, no one would provoke Zhu Daijin for her. She knew that she was not worthy, not even worthy. After thinking about it, Yi Yunyan was no longer restrained and spoke to Meng Xing openly. Are you okay sir? Meng Xing didn't even raise his head. Still counting. The answer was not what he asked, but it made Yi Yunyan's heart rise again. What? Meng Xing said. To help you deal with Zhu Daijin, you will sell the cafe to me and work for me. You don't want to cheat, do you? Yi Yunyan trembled all over, showing a look of shock. Sir, you. Meng Xingkai raised his head, raised his eyebrows and asked. Shouldn't he be the boss? Yi Yunyan's heart was filled with turmoil, and she lowered her crossed legs, feeling no longer lazy. It's really you. Meng Xing handed the notebook in his hand to Yi Yunyan. I calculated the value of this store. It's 10 million. You and this store belong to me. Only then did Yi Yunyan look at the notebook carefully. It turned out to be the acquisition plan of Jinmu Cafe. A strange feeling arose in my heart. Your brother, who is much younger than you, is planning how to eat you in front of you, blatantly and without any concealment of his affection for you, aggression. For her, who has lived in the upper class since she was a child and has been biting countless dogs since she fell into poverty, this is unprecedented nakedness. Yi Yunyan looked complicated. Why? Meng Xing said calmly. I've done what I promised you. Yi Yunyan asked. What do I have that deserves you and the people behind you to do this? Meng Xing said. It's too late to regret, the person who defrauded me will die. Yi Yunyan closed her mouth and looked at the notebook in front of her. Since today's meeting, Meng Xing has been answering questions that are wrong, but he has been expressing the deepest questions he wants to express the most. Meng Xing's behavior is beyond her cognition, and the part beyond her cognition often makes people feel confused and scared. Yi Yunyan did not dare to regard the young man in front of him as a little brother anymore. He had never been a child. And isn't this kind of man what she expects to appear in her life? A man who has the ability to restore the glory of the Yi family. She pondered for a moment. Thank you. Meng Xing then smiled. From now on, your monthly salary will be 20,000 yuan. Yi Yunyan asked. Then boss, what do you need me to do? Meng Xing said. Your duty is to serve our people. Take a look at your phone. Yi Yunyan took out her mobile phone from her bag in confusion. The Hunter Guild app had been downloaded. She was well informed and immediately realized that there was a cyber type awakened person beside Meng Xing. Your coffee and snacks, sir. Lin Lin came over at this time and brought up Blue Mountain coffee and fruit mousse cake. Meng Xing said thank you, gently stirred the coffee with a small spoon, looked out the window at the gradually dimming street with raindrops, and urged Yi Yunyan in no hurry. It took Yi Yunyan a long time to understand what the Hunter Guild was. This turns out to be an extraordinary organization. She put down her phone and couldn't calm down for a long time. She felt like she was involved in a huge whirlpool. Yi Yunyan felt a little scared in her heart. The brother in front of her was no longer cute and was very dangerous. Dangerous for her. Some are soft and some are numb. This is a feeling of being conquered that Zhu Daijin cannot bring. She whispered. Sir, are you the president? She remembered that Zhu Daijin mentioned the word president. Meng Xing took out a devil fruit and said without any doubt. Eat it and you will be considered one of your own. Yi Yunyan understood that most of the leaders of such extraordinary guilds were hidden in the sea of people. Only trustworthy people can know who they really are. Yi Yunyan was very obedient. She picked up the devil fruit and took a small bite. Meng Xing stared at her with interest. This woman was very elegant and could eat such unpalatable food calmly. After chewing slowly for a while, Yi Yunyan wiped his mouth with a tissue. Canine fruit. Sea level. After eating it, it can transform into a canine. It has the sharp claws, strong body and flexible movements of the canine. It can greatly strengthen the attack power of the eater, increase its speed, and possess the characteristics of related canines. Yi Yunyan stood up in panic, had she awakened? Did you actually wake up? The reason for that fruit just now. She suddenly remembered that Zhu Daijin had revealed his dual talents in front of her. 
I originally thought that Zhu Daijin was showing off to me, but it turned out that the reason for Zhu Daijin's awakening was Meng Xing. Meng Xing must have given him the same fruit. Yi Yunyan's eyes changed when she looked at Meng Xing, and her breathing became rapid. This man, this man, is like an abyss that cannot be pried into. Meng Xing waved to Yi Yunyan to sit down and began to express his thoughts. From today on, Jinmu Cafe will be the headquarters of the Hunter Guild. You also have a general understanding of the Hunter Guild through mobile phones. From now on, this will be the place where intermediate hunters send and submit tasks. In the future, this will also be the meeting place for the top leaders of the Hunter Guild. It is your and your staff's job to serve the members of the Hunter's Guild. Take care of your own people and don't leak any information about the Hunter Guild. Quote. Yi Yunyan asked. If Linlin and Qingqing join the Hunter Guild, will they eat the same fruit just now? Meng Xing shook his head. Devil fruits are hard to come by. Only you devil fruit awakeners are the lucky ones. Yi Yunyan understood. She is a smart woman. She will not ask more questions than she should and just do her own thing. Meng Xing stood up and prepared to leave. My people will come tomorrow to clean up the conference room and office of the Hunter Guild on the second floor. The renovation of the old city has not yet been completed, so he can't keep letting Sumanmen work in a leaky old house, right? Not to mention whether the dust there will affect the host, it's almost winter, how can people who work for themselves be miserable? Yi Yunyan stood up and was about to see Meng Xing off. Suddenly she remembered the two bank cards given by Zhu Daijin and took them out. Boss, this is the money brother Jun sent to you today. Meng Xing waved his hand. You can use it as you see fit. It can be an investment or anything else. It can be the logistical support of the Hunter Guild. After Meng Xing walked away, Yi Yunyan said to the two waitresses. Close the door, I have something to tell you. Wang Shu is a teacher in a high school. He put on his most handsome suit today and drove out of school in a second-hand car worth tens of thousands of yuan. He glanced at his watch and took two deep breaths unconsciously. He absentmindedly entered a website a few days ago, received an inexplicable express delivery, and ate a strange fruit. Then, the second combat talent was awakened. He has actually become a member of the legendary Extraordinary Organization. Tonight is a meeting of this organization. He was dressed up, even his hair was neatly combed. He is an ordinary person, just an F-level awakener, and he is looking forward to this legendary journey. As soon as he drove out of the school gate, he saw the scene he least wanted to see. A green-haired student in his class was pulling a few girls with heavy makeup to wait for the bus. As Wang Shu, who had awakened his F-level combat talent, it was easy to eavesdrop on their conversation from a short distance. Where is Daihao Nightclub? Xiao Ming, you won't sell us out, will you? Nightclubs don't always feel like a good place. Lu Mao sneered. You are just fooled by Wang Shu's teachings. The eldest brother I recognize is Brother Shang. It took me a lot of effort to get Brother Shang to be willing to see you. You can work there in the future, at the front desk, receptionist, etc. Isn't it better than you guys going back to the old city later? I asked you to dress up nicely just to leave a good impression on Brother Shang. Quote. What Lu Mao said was so exciting that it really attracted the girls. Wang Shu frowned, drove the car over, and said sternly. Why are you here if you don't go home after school? Look what you look like. Everyone go home. Several girls looked at their outfits today, feeling a little shy and uncomfortable in front of the teacher. Lu Mao sneered twice with a look of disdain. Wang Shu, this is outside the school. Don't make yourself stupid by teaching. Stop asking about social affairs. As soon as he finished speaking, the car called by Lu Mao arrived, and he took a few girls into the car and left Juchen. Wang Shu's face was full of confusion. The Hunter's Guild meeting started in two hours. He sighed and drove to follow. Many people say that after the emergence of Su Manman and Meng Xing in Nane number. One middle school, their luck has disappeared. Both of these people have awakened S-level talents, but they cannot set good examples for the younger generations because they have life talents, which destroys the confidence of the junior students. The students who were already naughty and mischievous just gave up on themselves. But Wang Shu was unwilling to give up on them. Even if the students knew clearly what they were going to face and were going to go astray, he still wanted to take advantage of them and give them a chance. 
this is the teacher's responsibility, isn't it? Whoever is involved with these underground forces will end well. Die on the streets or become disabled. After driving with Lu Mao and the others for half an hour, I realized that this was not the Daihao nightclub, but a KTV under the Daihao nightclub. Lu Mao has already gone up with a few girls. Wang Shu quickly got out of the car and chased after him, but it was so big here that Wang Shu got lost here. After wandering around for a long time, he finally noticed something was wrong outside a private room and heard Lu Mao's voice. In the box, Lu Mao was completely controlled by several big men, and his nose was bruised and his face was swollen. He hissed. No, Brother Shang. Didn't you promise me to arrange jobs for my classmates? That fat man who weighs more than 200 pounds and has a full face is Brother Shang. His small, lustful eyes stared at the three trembling girls hugging each other with lust. A girl in a high ponytail and short skirt struggled and cursed at Lu Mao. Xiao Ming. If I believe your evil deeds, I will be killed by you. I will definitely kill you when I get out. Lu Mao lost all his previous air and could only apologize endlessly with a sad look on his face. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I really didn't expect this. Brother Shang said with a smile. You did this beautifully, it's all Hina. Don't worry, they may not be able to survive tonight after all the trouble they put me through, and they won't retaliate against you. Quote. Green hair cried. Brother, they are my classmates. Brother Shang said impatiently. I know, I will give you 300 yuan. After saying that, several girls stretched out their hands in fear. At this moment, the door was suddenly kicked open, and a man appeared in front of everyone. Wearing a suit and standing straight. The students shouted in surprise. Old. I couldn't say the next word. Because that man wears a clown mask. The suit and mask, if the back is dyed green, it will look a bit like the underground king in Gotham, Cho Yi. Wang Shu felt a little relieved in his heart. Fortunately, his student did not let himself down, but was deceived because of his innocence. After gaining power, he always thinks about the scene where the hero saves the beauty, and the beauty sacrifices herself to repay the favor. But if the teacher saves his students and gives them a new lease of life, he would be more willing. Let them go. Where did you come from, weirdo? Brother Shang laughed when he saw Wang Shu. Are you a cosplayer? If you want to cosplay as Jack Nappy, the name of the Gotham clown, at least you have to dye your hair green, right? Several gangsters following Brother Shang were gearing up and walking towards Wang Shu with evil smiles. Wang Shu's palms turned red, the high temperature caused the air to deform slightly, and his tone was unkind. I say again, let them go. When Brother Shang saw this, his expression turned ugly. You are still an awakener. He stood up and told his subordinates to step back, then twisted his neck. The awakened one is not something you can deal with. Let me deal with this brat who knows nothing about the world. Brother Shang's originally fat body changed in an instant, the fat was converted into muscles, and his body size increased to more than 2 meters. This is his talent, D-level heat conversion. Brother Shang crossed the wine table and came to Wang Shu, lowering his head and grinning. You think you can destroy me just because you're an awakened person? I can give Master Lang a show, do you think you don't have any real ability? Several girls showed fear on their faces. Brother Shang's aura was definitely not that of an ordinary awakened person, he was definitely E-level or above. Brother Shang is right. If he has to deal with his terrifying physique all night long, he may not be able to survive. The masked person in front of them, whose attire and voice could be heard, was their teacher Wang Shu. Wang Shu is just an E-level awakener, how can he be Brother Shang's opponent? Wang Shu lowered his voice. I really don't want to take action in front of these children. It's still too late for you to regret it. It wasn't that he was afraid of showing his violent side in front of the students, but the most important thing was that he was afraid of the rules of the Hunter Guild. Do not promote the Hunter Guild. If the identity behind the mask is exposed, there will always be people who follow the clues and find the Hunter Guild. There is no shortage of smart people in this world. Brother Shang didn't think highly of Wang Shu at all. Jen Ni Ma Chunabu. After he finished speaking, a fist as big as a casserole hit Wang Shu on the head. Wang Shu sighed softly and activated his natural abilities. Spring Fruit. Level C. Able to turn any part of the body into a spring. You can freely attack from any place as a bounce point. 
Wang Shu's legs changed and strangely turned into springs. Using both legs, he instantly disappeared in front of Brother Shang, and then appeared behind and above him. A fist filled with hot energy hit the back of Brother Shang's neck. Brother Shang was hit by this blow, staggered twice, almost fell down, and shook his fist at Wang Shu angrily. As a high school teacher, Wang Shu must have superb physical skills and high spirituality. You can quickly adapt to the newly obtained sea level spring fruit ability and master it skillfully. Wang Shu jumped repeatedly in the spacious box, crisscrossing the walls and ceiling, making Brother Shang unable to touch him. Then with the help of increasing inertia, the speed became faster and faster, and he punched Brother Shang in the chest with a volley. Brother Shang screamed and fell down, looking at Wang Shu in horror. You, what kind of monster are you? Dual talents. Wang Shu, who is very strong in physical strength and spirituality, is completely different from the old beggar. After a series of moves, he does not blush or breathe. I said you had time to regret it just now. Wang Shu was also a member of the National Army before he became a teacher. In recent years, the international situation has been tense, and he has killed people on the border. To prevent this person from finding out who he was behind the mask, Wang Shu planned to eradicate the problem. Teacher. You are great. Several girls screamed in surprise. This scream brought Wang Shu back to his senses and his murderous aura dissipated. Wang Shu hesitated, should he kill someone in front of the students? The students have guessed who they are, so are they going to kill their own students too? He can't. In the end, he just said, go away, to Brother Shang. With the help of several men, Brother Shang climbed out of the box and bumped into someone before he entered the office. Just as he was about to curse, he raised his head and saw clearly the appearance of the person coming. His face immediately changed and he wailed. Brother Wolf. Someone is destroying the place. The man had white hair and a hooked nose, and was wearing a leather jacket. He was Zhu Dajin's top thug, Crazy Wolf. As a confidant of Zhu Dajin, Mad Wolf knew that the boss would attend a secret meeting of the Hunter Guild today. I have nothing to do, so I went to a few places below and planned to gather a few old concubines to party all night long. Someone ruined the place. Crazy Wolf got excited, scolded Brother Shang as a waste, and strode into the box. Who the hell is destroying my place and beating my little brother? The few girls who had just shown expressions of surviving the disaster became nervous again. Brother Shang is this guy's younger brother. What kind of master does this have to be? Can the teacher still stand it? Wang Shu sighed and stood in front of several girls. It's your people who want to molest them first. If you don't want to be reasonable, let's make signs now. I'm in a hurry. Crazy Wolf rubbed his eyes. Mask. In a hurry. After finding someone to support him, Brother Shang, who looked like a villain behind Crazy Wolf, whispered. Brother Wolf, this kid is lawless with his dual talents. You have to be careful. Crazy Wolf is shocked, or is it dual talent? Isn't this a full stack of buffs? He turned back and gave Brother Shang a mouthful. You and the others raped you. Are you still a human being? Brother Shang covered his swollen fat face and was confused. Isn't this his daily operation? Crazy Wolf laughed along and said. This Mr. Lichun Cho. It's my fault in disciplining my subordinates, please forgive me. The whole world fell silent. It seems like these two people know each other. Obviously the man in the mask and suit has a much higher status than the crazy wolf. Several students began to wonder, could their teacher be a legendary gangster teacher who retired from the world? Just like the main template commonly used in internet cool articles. The look he looked at Wang Shu was a little more admiring, especially because the green hair was not mainstream. I recall that I said without shame, you have a lot to do with society's affairs. He felt ashamed. Wang Shu was also a little surprised. He hesitated and said. Can we go now? Crazy Wolf nodded repeatedly. Come on, can I call a cab for you? Wang Shu was confused. Are people in this society so polite now? No, I'll drive. After that, he took a few students to the KTV and didn't say a word no matter what the students said along the way. It wasn't until the students got into taxis and left that they walked to their second-hand car and drove to Jinmu Cafe. After Wang Shu left, Mad Wolf breathed a sigh of relief. Brother Shang was a little worried and asked in a low voice. Brother, what kind of big shot is this? If he is a big shot, 
why don't you send him a car? I'll go and apologize in person. The mad wolf slapped Brother Shang again, his eyes red, like a wild beast that chooses people to devour. Remember, he has never been here. You have never seen him. I have not seen him either. Brother Shang collapsed on the ground, looking at the crazy wolf in horror, his mouth not closing for a long time. Jinmu Cafe held a, make-up coffee, event tonight, and all those who dress up in fancy clothes can enjoy half-price coffee. When someone wants to go up to the second floor, the masked employee will say that this is a work area and guests are not allowed to enter. If someone says, I'm here to join, employees will lead the masked person into the conference hall on the second floor. The seats in the conference hall on the second floor are now full, and Wang Shu is late. There are no windows in the conference hall, so everyone can barely see each other's masks with the dim light of the ceiling crystal lamp. Smiling faces, ghosts, animal heads, sacrifices, facial makeup and other weird masks are like a gathering of the chaotic camp. The slightly luxurious decoration and the fragrant coffee in front of you give everyone the illusion of traveling to another absurd world. Unconsciously, I wonder if this demonic version of the round table conference is fake and very dreamy. No one spoke, their breathing was much lighter, and they remained quiet among themselves. At this time, the door was pushed open again. Everyone sat up even more seriously, because they knew that except for the main seat, the seats were packed, and the next person to appear was the legendary president. Meng Xing still wore the mask of the crying ghost king, wearing a simple black sportswear without any pattern, and a hood connected to the sweatshirt on his head. A ghost mask, a demon fox mask, and a black cat mask. The people wearing these three masks stood up immediately. It is obvious that these three people are one man and three women. Especially the man in the demon fox mask and the man in the black cat mask, judging from the body curves, they are obviously women. The remaining people did not dare to neglect and immediately stood up respectfully. Even if they have met the president, they don't know the rules of the hunter meeting, so they can only imitate the, seniors, to stand up and bow down to salute. Meng Xing nodded lightly, motioned for everyone to sit down, lowered his voice, and began to speak. A few of you are lucky enough to have obtained devil fruits. Those who awaken for devil fruits are bound to be more likely to become intermediate hunters. So a few of you newcomers qualify for this meeting. Quote. Everyone looked at each other with a bit of respect hidden in their eyes. It turns out that this is a meeting that only intermediate hunters are eligible to participate in. I am a young cat hiding among the tigers. Most people secretly rejoiced. Sure enough, they were the ones chosen by fate. Just by eating that fruit, they got the treatment of a low-level hunter who doesn't know how long it takes to reach the level of an intermediate hunter. Little did they know that this place was full of low-level hunters. Meng Xing's few words created an illusion for everyone that the guild was full of powerful people. Meng Xing sat down and gently stirred the coffee in front of him with a small spoon. There are a few rules I want to reiterate. First of all, no publicity about the denomination is allowed at any time. Hide your true identity in this world, and don't let the guild be exposed to the world because of you. Quote. Everyone understands. Extraordinary forces are never active in the earthly world. This is also the reason why everyone has only heard of extraordinary forces but not seen them on the news. The mysterious attributes possessed by extraordinary forces are not for showing off, but for developing and protecting themselves. Just like the law of the dark forest, whoever shows up first will be most likely to be attacked by all forces. These forces include the sheriff's department. Meng Xing raised his head and said leisurely. But, someone is not following the rules. Many hunters looked at each other, who dared to be so bold. Wang Shu's heart skipped a beat, and cold beads of sweat flowed from his temples. Meng Xing stood up and walked to the last position, next to the clown-masked man, and leaned down. You know, Mr. Clown, I hate disobedient people. The voice was low and cold, with murderous intent. The clown-masked man raised his throat nervously. Me. Sure enough, does the guild already know about his time at Crown KVT? He wanted to explain something, but Meng Xing patted him on the shoulder. Don't be nervous, I'll give you 24 hours to deal with the troubles you left. Otherwise the guild will handle it for you, along with you. Quote. He looked at Meng Xing's back as he walked towards the throne. 
The panicked face under the mask calmed down, and then he frowned. How to deal with it? Brother Shang and his group of younger brothers are going to die, so are his students going to die too. He panicked, his mind racing, wondering how to save his students and himself. Meng Xing continued. The second rule of the Hunter Guild is to protect the Sha Kingdom, hunt down all enemies that are detrimental to the Sha Kingdom, and reward hunters with points based on the quality of the corpse. Of course, the first rule must be followed, the guild must not be exposed. Quote. In today's chaotic international situation, Sha Kingdom has too many enemies. Today's Hunter's Guild is still in the early stages of development. If a dark age like the previous life appears in Sha Kingdom, it will be like strangulating the Hunter's Guild in the cradle. With Sha Kingdom gone, will the Hunter Guild still be able to survive alone? As soon as these words came out, the corners of the Hunter's mouths raised slightly. Who doesn't want to kill those turtles? Killing those fools and getting points, isn't this the same as getting paid to play on your mobile phone? If they weren't afraid of exposing their identity and exposing their guild, they would now want to book a flight to Dongying country and become the prime minister's assassin. Meng Xing continued to speak. The third rule is to hunt monsters and turn in their corpses, and you can earn points according to the monster's level. The spirituality contained in the corpses of monsters is definitely stronger than that of humans, so it is perfect for cultivating extraordinary plants. Everyone was completely relieved. They all joined the Hunter Guild by accident, and they were originally worried that they had joined some evil organization. Now it seems that it is all too much to worry about. Hunting invading enemies is patriotism, hunting invading monsters is love for the world. Is this kind of guild a cult? Anyone who has such an idea may have his brain kicked by the monkey. Meng Xing continued to explain the rules to everyone. I don't know how long it took before the meeting ended completely. In general, there are only a few rules. You can't expose the guild, you can't expose your identity, kill people who are detrimental to Sha Kingdom, and kill monsters. Actively complete guild tasks and improve your hunter level. You can unlock and redeem more powerful extraordinary plants in the mall. Upgrading to the highest level of devil level hunter will obtain unimaginably powerful devil fruits. It was already late at night when everyone walked out of the cafe door. But they were all refreshed, not tired at all, and even a little excited. Knowing more about the Hunter Guild makes them glad that they joined. Only Wang Shu was sitting in the car with a frown on his face. He seemed to have caused a lot of trouble, but he did not regret saving his students. I can find a way to keep the students silent about what happened today, or at worst, I will try my best to find a way to get them to join the Hunter Guild. But what about Brother Shang and those gangsters? They were not silenced at that time and now it is too difficult to find them and kill them now. Quote. How to deal with the aftermath became the most distressing thing for him. He rarely smoked and for the first time he took a cigarette. The acrid smoke entered his throat, making him sober. It suddenly occurred to him that hunters could post tasks in the hunter guild. He had already completed the novice task and had 15 points. How about using points to post bounty missions? He immediately parked the car on the side of the road and opened the Hunter Guild app. There are various tasks in the taskbar. What about killing a wanted criminal? What about killing a maniac? What about killing a spy? What about killing a certain gangster group? Many of these are false missions created by Suminmin in order to protect the privacy of hunters. This prevents someone from finding the hunter who issued the mission by following the clues in the mission. Reward Mission Kill Brother Shang and his horse boy at Crown KTV. Reward. 15 points. Meng Xing was the only one left in the conference hall, stirring the coffee in front of him, his eyes wandering around, and his brain was thinking. Dong dong dong. There was a knock on the door of the conference room, and Meng Xing looked confused. Yi Yunyan, wearing a black cat mask, walked in carrying a tray. Place the blue mountain coffee and fruit mousse cake on the tray on Meng Xing's table and whisper. I'm sorry to disturb you sir, but you haven't eaten anything tonight and I would like to send you something. Meng Xing did not blame Yi Yunyan for taking matters into his own hands, and tasted the snacks in front of him with dignity. From a certain perspective, he and Yi Yunyan are both entrepreneurs, and Yi Yunyan has more experience than him. Yi Yunyan took off his mask and placed two pairs of white and tender hands on Meng Xing's shoulders, massaging them gently to relieve his fatigue. You seem very tired. 
Meng Xing was indeed tired, but not because of the development of the Hunter Guild, but because of Wang Shu. This teacher was also his and Sumanman's class teacher. Meng Xing knew everything that happened to Wang Shu today. If you change the angle and stand in Wang Shu's perspective, you will take action without hesitation, without fear of exposing yourself. However, the scenery seen in different locations is also different. From the president's perspective, Wang Shu deserves to die unless he can smooth out all the waves and keep his identity completely confidential. Will Wang Shu kill a few students? I'm afraid he can't do it. Meng Xing hopes that Wang Shu can kill Brother Shang and others and use a gentle way to solve the hidden dangers caused by students. Teacher, don't let me down. Meng Xing thought. If Wang Shu hadn't killed Brother Shang and the others, and hadn't solved the trouble caused by the students, then Wang Shu could only be the one who died. At this time, the mobile phone rang. It's the background news from the Hunter Guild. Hunter, Clown, issues a mission to kill Crown KTV, Brother Shang, and his subordinates. Task reward, 15 points. Meng Xing murmured. Has it started yet? He smiled self-deprecatingly. This is his own business. I'm too glass-hearted. Yi Yunyan once gave the president's father a massage to relieve his fatigue. Her technique was very good and very relaxing. Meng Xing stopped emo all of a sudden, and the only way to cultivate more extraordinary fruits is to quickly cultivate them. Use the computer in front of you to open the shared database of Sumanman's host, and then start publishing tasks. Reward mission. Hunt Li Fengren, the person who awakened the E-Stage combat talent. Reward mission. Hunt Zhang Mingran, a person with awakened D-level combat talent. Reward mission. Hunt Lu Kong, the person with awakened D-level combat talent. Without exception, these individuals were all fugitives in the sheriff's database. He needs the spirit in the corpse. If he hunted ordinary awakened people, he believed that he would be noticed by the Public Security Bureau soon. Killing these rats hiding in the sewers is less noticeable. They had many enemies, who knew it was the hunters who killed them. Of course, the task of collecting spiritual items never ends. Daihao Nightclub, General Manager's Office. Brother Shang knelt on the ground tremblingly, followed by Brother Shang's younger brothers who didn't know whether they were dead or alive. Zhu Daijin lit a cigarette, looked through the Hunter Guild app, and finally found the mission he had been waiting for for a long time. Hunter, Clown, issues a mission to kill Crown KTV, Brother Shang, and his subordinates. Task reward, 15 points. Zhu Daijin laughed, revealing two rows of teeth blackened by cigarette smoke. Axiom, I should really thank you. Brother Shang shivered with fright. Master Jun Jun, thank you for what? Zhu Daijin blew out a smoke ring. Thank you for helping me find a friend. As a reward, I won't drown you in the river. Just wipe your neck and be happy. Brother Shang was so frightened that he cried, with runny nose. Why, Master Jun, I am loyal to you. Zhu Daijin slammed the table and became furious. Are you fooling loyal? If you dare to rape the little girl today, you will dare to rape me, Zhu Daijin, tomorrow. You deserve to die. Alang. Quote. Crazy Wolf understood, and the cyclone in his hand gathered into a wind blade, which was sent into Brother Shang's neck. Brother Shang covered the blood gushing from his neck, looked at the mad wolf in horror, and gradually lost his voice. Zhu Daijin smiled and took a photo of Brother Shang's body with his mobile phone, uploaded it to the Hunter Guild app, and clicked to complete the task. Mad Wolf wiped the blood on his wrist and walked up to Zhu Daijin. Boss, do you need to contact that teacher? Zhu Daijin waved his hand. Don't, this is a taboo of the Hunter Guild. I just want to know who the hunter who accepted my favor is. Remember, don't investigate the Joker further and delete all the surveillance videos in the corridor of Crown KTV. Pack up the corpse and hand it over to the guild. There will be another reward for the corpse of the awakened criminal. Quote. Crazy Wolf understood and was about to dispose of the body when he was stopped by Zhu Daijin. By the way, except for the flesh and blood business, all other unclean things in Dai House should stop. Let's try to keep a low profile from now on. Crazy Wolf nodded to express his understanding. Zhu Daijin was busy working on the task and suddenly discovered a bug. You can get points by collecting spiritual items and hunting awakened criminals. With the points, you can issue bounty tasks. Spiritual items are easy to buy, and it's not difficult for me to find those fugitives. 
can I use my points to post a bounty mission to kill those idiots in the Black Dragon Gang? Doing the simplest thing can break the hardest bones. After Zhu Daijin figured it out, he made phone calls all night long to buy spiritual items through connections, and mobilized his men to find the criminals on the reward list. Zhu Daijin's information on those fugitives was more comprehensive than the General Administration's information database. Seven days later, Nane East District Public Security Bureau Director's Office Wei Ming called his sister with a grimace. Sister, it's outrageous, it's outrageous. All the fugitives you prepared for me have disappeared. You have to help me think of a way, sister, if I don't have enough credit, how can I get promoted? Quote. Wei Ming's sister is the Director General of the Public Security Bureau. She not only helped Wei Ming arrange the position of director, but also prepared many fugitives for him. These are all walking feats. Wei Ming knows where these fugitives are hiding. As long as they capture these fugitives, there will be enough reasons to be promoted to the general administration. But in just a few days, those fugitives disappeared from the world. A cold female voice came from the other end of the phone. Are you sure you're not just playful and careless? Wei Ming quickly said. I'm sure. And I suspect someone is targeting me. On the other end of the phone. Who is it? Wei Ming gritted his teeth and said. Tilin. This is no random guess. According to the plan given to him by his sister, he will first be the director, arrest the fugitives and then transfer to the general bureau. The position of captain of the military attaché battalion of the general administration was originally prepared for him. Unexpectedly, Tilin suddenly awakened his dual talents. He robbed Tilin's director, and Tilin directly robbed his own military attaché captain. It's definitely him, he's afraid that I'll take back my military attaché captain. So I looked into what my sister did for me. It's ruining my original promotion plan. Quote. There was silence on the other end of the phone for a while. It's not necessarily a bad thing that you won't be promoted to the general administration now. Recently, some monsters disguised as humans have sneaked into the South China Sea. The military attaché team has to carry out dangerous missions every day. You should also be careful in the East District. Last night, three homeless people in the East District were suspected of being eaten by monsters, and the remains scared an 80-year-old man to death. Last night, two women who came home from the night shift in the East District were assaulted and their bodies were cut into pieces. It was suspected that they were caused by monsters. We appeal to the general public to try not to go out at night. Last night, after the evening news was broadcast in Jinmu Cafe, beautiful and elegant music continued. Meng Xing, who was sitting by the window with his head down writing notes, raised his head and murmured. The East District is starting to get a bit uneasy. Yi Yunyan prepared the coffee with her own hands and sent it to Meng Xing. This year's monster cholera is so strange. They usually start their evil in the old city. Meng Xing took a sip of coffee and thought about this monster cholera. The monsters appeared in the new city this time, obviously not to fill their stomachs, so they looked down upon the meat in the old city. They are afraid that they will make big moves next. Yi Yunyan sat in front of Meng Xing dignifiedly. I really don't know how these monsters broke through the city's border defenses and entered the new city. The biggest difference between the new city and the old city is not the difference between rich and poor, but the fact that the new city has intensive defense by city defense attaches and is very safe. It is precisely for this reason that under the operation of capital, all wealthy people have gone to live in new urban areas. Even if the residents of the old city rent the shabbiest houses in the new city, they still want to save their lives in the new city. Meng Xing paused. Maybe they have the ability to disguise themselves. They can disguise themselves as humans and sneak into the city, or they can be cats, dogs or something like that. These words made Yi Yunyan's eyes show a hint of panic. If monsters could disguise themselves as humans, it would be simply terrifying. No one is sure whether what they encounter is actually a human being. Maybe the customers drinking coffee here are those monsters who like to eat human flesh. Ring ring ring. The wind chime on the door rang, and Lin Lin shouted. Welcome. Meng Xing and Yi Yunyan's eyes were attracted, and they saw a man and two women walking into the coffee shop. Like a family of three. They were dressed in rags and their clothes didn't fit. Especially the little girl, whose cuffs were obviously torn and her coat was almost dragging to the ground. It smells so good. 
The girl jumped up with excitement, her eyes filled with excitement. The guests were attracted by the girl's clear voice and showed friendly eyes. Children in slums are hungry for coffee and beg their parents to experience it not once or twice. Lin Lin didn't even look at the dishes being served. She rushed out of the cafe when she saw that the clothes were in tatters. Her face was filled with enthusiasm. What do you need? The girl swallowed. Anything will do. A family of three sat next to Meng Xing. Lin Lin selected affordable coffee and snacks and sent them to the family of three. She touched the girl's head and gave her a candy like a magic trick before leaving and continuing to work. Meng Xing glanced at the family of three and continued writing and drawing on the table. Yi Yunyan just stayed with her quietly. An unknown amount of time passed. When Meng Xing looked up again, there were no customers in the store. Only the little girl was left in the family of three at the next table. Their parents had gone somewhere, and Lin Lin was standing next to the table with a look of embarrassment on her face. Listening to the conversation between Lin Lin and the little girl, it seemed that her parents had left in an emergency, leaving the little girl behind in the store. Who knew that it had been so long since the coffee shop was about to close, but he still hadn't come back. Sister, my parents will definitely send the money over tomorrow. You can keep me here. I won't lie to you. The little girl begged Lin Lin. Lin Lin gave Yi Yunyan a look of help. Sister, it's not peaceful outside right now. Why don't we keep this child here tonight? Her voice was very low because she knew the nature of Jinmu Cafe and was afraid that her good intentions would bring trouble to the guild. Snapped. Single quote. Meng Xing closed his notebook and stood up. You can't keep anyone in Jinmu Cafe. I happen to be going home tonight. I'll take this child with me. The little girl looked at Meng Xing with a wary look, as if she was worried about meeting a strange man. Meng Xing came to the girl with his notebook, knelt down, touched the girl's head, and said with a smile. My uncle has a lot of toys at my uncle's house that I would like to give my baby to play with. Can I stay at my uncle's house tonight and send you back tomorrow? The little girl put down her guard and showed her little fangs happily. It is good. Meng Xing took the little girl's hand and left, while Yi Yunyan gracefully bowed behind her and bowed slightly. We were almost reaching the old town, the street lights were getting dimmer and darker, and the night was getting darker. The little girl suddenly asked. Brother, aren't you afraid of the darkness? Meng Xing said like coaxing a child. Brother is an adult and is not afraid of the dark. The little girl raised her cute little face. But I heard that a lot of monsters come out at night recently, which is very scary. Meng Xing shook his head. I've never seen monsters before. I've only seen them in textbooks. I don't think they're scary. They're quite cute. The little girl was stunned for a moment, paused, and lowered her head. Cute. Is it really cute? The little girl's body began to tremble, and two pustules slowly appeared on her back, and a pair of bat wings broke out from the pustules. Her smile gradually became exaggerated, the corners of her mouth split all the way to the roots of her ears, and she let out a weird and horrifying laugh. He he he, are the monsters in your textbook as cute as me? Meng Xing felt a tingling pain in his hand. He broke away from the girl's hand and found that his palm had turned black. Poisoned. You actually want to eat alone. In the darkness beyond the reach of the street lights, two figures came out, who were the little girl's, parents. But the couple also turned into monsters, resembling insects but not humans, with huge mouthparts exposed in their mouths. The girl said bitterly. I could have stayed in the coffee shop tonight and eaten all the people in it. It's all because of this guy's meddling. Dad, said with a ferocious smile. Then let's break up this nosy idiot. Mom, licked her mouthparts and said sarcastically. Why are you silent? Don't you think monsters are cute? If you say I'm beautiful, I can let you enjoy the gentleness of monsters. Meng Xing burned green flames in his hands to remove the toxins. He stared at the three monsters greedily. You guys are really cute. The green flame suddenly became fierce, rising three feet straight. What kind of monster are you? In the horrified eyes of the three monsters, the appearance of a three-foot-tall cyan flame general appeared. Meng Xing was in the Qinglian earth heart fire as if he were in water, floating up to the heart of the green flame general. This is inspired by the previous anime mission, Madara's Suzano. Meng Xing's weakness is that his physical body is not strong enough. If he uses a huge spirit to form such a flame giant, it will be both offensive and defensive. 
The cyan flame general stretched out his hand to grab. Dad. This monster was D-level at best, and was burned to death by Meng Xing without any room for resistance. Mom, looks pretty good, probably AC level 1. But she was panicking at the moment. She couldn't let the flame giant in front of her enjoy this tenderness. Mother, spat out a cloud of poisonous mist, spread out a pair of compass-like insect legs and ran away. Qinglian's earth core fire is the nemesis of poison, and the poisonous mist turns into steam before it touches the cyan flame general. The cyan flame general grabbed, mom, broke her neck, then grabbed the confused monster girl, and said in a solemn voice. Brother thinks you are really cute, so cute that I want to bury you. I know you are strong, but you are not that strong. Do you know how many monsters have come to the South China Sea during this time? Don't think that getting information from me will prevent this monster invasion, because the horror this time is beyond your imagination. Let me go, and I'll tell you how to escape from the South China Sea. The little monster girl bared her teeth and kept shouting, trying to get Meng Xing to let her go. She felt that if Meng Xing didn't kill her, he must have noticed that this time's monster invasion was different from the past, so he took action. Until the little monster followed Meng Xing through the garden where construction had not yet been completed and entered Meng Xing's small courtyard, it kept chattering. Meng Xing threw the two adult monsters on the ground and walked to a huge container in the yard. Opening the door, several bodies rolled down. The little monster shut up. Because she saw hundreds of corpses in that huge container. The human being in front of me is not a kind person. He killed more humans than monsters. She saw Meng Xing dig a deep pit in the ground and throw the corpses into it. There was not enough room to hold so many things in the pit, so Meng Xing stepped up and stepped on it. He suddenly gained two more bodies and threw two monster corpses in. This kind of behavior that even a monster would consider perverted made the little monster swallow its saliva. He retracted his wings and sat down on the ground, not daring to make any unnecessary movements. Meng Xing sat next to the little monster and said, do you know why I won't kill you? I'll keep you useful, don't be so nervous. The little monster breathed a sigh of relief and thought hard about what effect it could have on Meng Xing. Meng Xing's next words frightened the little monster. I have always wanted to see if the spirituality of living creatures buried in the ground would be beneficial to cultivating plants. The little monster cried directly. Brother, please don't. I'm still young. Can you wait until I grow up before you do it? Meng Xing shook his head. This was impossible, unless the little monster had other uses. Suddenly, the starry sky dimmed and the moon was covered by dark clouds. With a loud thunder, strong winds rose and heavy rain poured down. The howling wind coupled with the heavy rain is like the sky crying. The sky is crying for something terrible. Meng Xing quickly stood up from the vegetable field. European energy is overwhelming. This is a vision. Are there any more S-level plants about to appear? The ground was churning, a vine sprouted out of the ground, and pythons were scurrying around in the vegetable field. The vines are constantly absorbing the remaining spiritual nutrients in the vegetable field, and rose flowers sprout from the vines. It is stunningly beautiful and charming. When hundreds of rose flowers grew on the vines, huge thunder exploded in the sky, causing Meng Xing's ears to hurt. Meng Xing raised his head, the clouds dispersed and the rain stopped. What is this, and why does it make God cry and be angry? A mysterious message poured into Meng Xing's mind. Stairway to the sun, S-level items. The stairway of the sun is also called the, ancestral virus. This virus can enhance the human body's abilities, including physical strength, mobility, etc., and extend human lifespan. Only a small number of people will achieve perfect evolution, and there is a greater chance of terrible failed evolution. Meng Xing immediately knew what it was. Not many people may be familiar with Stairway to the Sun, and probably not many people have heard of the Ancestor Virus, but this movie is definitely widely known. Resident Evil. The C, T, and G viruses created by the Umbrella Corporation in that movie all came from research on the Staircase of the Sun. In other words, the failed evolution of this thing can create low IQ monsters that exceed the limits of the human body and are contagious commonly known as zombies. The probability of failed evolution is 99.99%. Meng Xing was both happy and worried about the appearance of stairway to the sun. 
he was originally thinking about how to quickly develop the lowest level hunters. Can't all hunters be devil fruit awakeners? Devil fruit cultivation is not easy. Doesn't this stairway to the sun give ordinary people extraordinary power? It's simply a weakened version of the devil fruit. Meng Xing was full of joy for the appearance of the sun staircase, but worries also flooded into his mind. He wants to develop hunters, but he doesn't want to turn this martial arts world into a zombie apocalypse. It would be perfect if the contagious and intelligence-destroying flaws of this thing could be corrected. The Green Lotus Earth Core Fire has the effect of clearing the mind, calming the mind and removing toxins. I wonder if the flaws of this thing can be erased. Meng Xing did as he said, holding up the Green Lotus Earth Core Fire in his hand, and the power of the Green Lotus Earth Core Fire entered the rose flower along with the spirituality. Both of these things were items grown by Meng Xing, and he was as familiar with them as his right and left hands. In less than a minute, Meng Xing completed the transformation of the rose flower. He glanced at the little monster and handed her the rose in his hand. Have eaten. The little monster didn't dare to be disobedient and ate it obediently. She felt that she was a monster, and even if it was poisonous, it shouldn't cause much problems. However, the next second she knew she was wrong. The terrifying tearing feeling came from all parts of the body. The heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and even the brain cells were suffering from the pain of cell tearing. I lay on the ground screaming for a long time before the pain subsided. Viralization. Level E. It consumes spirituality, can become viral, and change its appearance. Strength, speed, and self-healing ability are greatly improved. Swallowing spiritual items and the sun staircase can promote evolution and increase the level. The little monster was shocked. It hurt a little, but he had awakened a new talent. Monsters can awaken talents just like humans, but monsters are born with the ability to awaken combat talents, and the probability of awakening multiple talents in the future is higher than that of humans. Meng Xing observed her for a long time before he determined that the IQ destroying flaws of the ancestor virus had been made up, and the infectivity should also be eliminated. He wanted to purify the entire vines of the ancestor virus with the green lotus earth core fire, but after thinking about it, he picked a few rose flowers from the vines and kept them. The zombification carried by this ancestor virus may be useful in the future. Meng Xing's whole body was flooded with spiritual energy on the vine. After more than 10 minutes, all the negative effects of the vines were removed, and then I breathed a sigh of relief. Without waiting for a break, Meng Xing, who was extremely energetic, continued to bury the corpse. Taking advantage of today's overwhelming European energy, we might be able to cultivate some more extraordinary plants. When all the remaining corpses were turned into ashes, Meng Xingkai looked at the fruits of his labor with joy like an old farmer. A large number of F-level and E-level extraordinary plants were grown, and five devil fruits were also cultivated. You, what kind of monster are you? The little monster could feel the power contained in these plants, and trembled with fear, regretting why he had to provoke Meng Xing. Why did you choose that cafe? What is this? Meng Xing didn't waste any time, picked up the little monster and threw it into the dug pit. The little monster cried loudly. I've never eaten anyone, please let me go. Meng Xing began to fill in the soil. The little monster's face was covered with mud, and those who didn't know it thought Meng Xing was torturing and killing children. The little monster prayed hard. Sir, don't bury me. Go bury other monsters. I know where they are. Meng Xing stopped what he was doing, waiting for the little monster's next words. Seeing the drama, the little monster held back his tears. Sir, I know where those monsters' lair is. I never lie. Meng Xing began to make calculations in his mind. He didn't want to see anything happen in the South China Sea. After all, the hunter guild had just taken root in the South China Sea and was beginning to take shape. If the South China Sea falls, won't all your efforts be in vain? The most important thing is that the devil fruit tree, green lotus, and sun staircase are all in the old city, and he is not sure whether they can be taken away. Meng Xing squatted outside the pit and asked calmly. First tell me why you came to Nane. The little monster rolled his eyes and asked pitifully. Then can you pull me up first? Meng Xing grinned and continued to fill in the soil, scaring the little monster into screaming. I say, my lord, I say. Only then did Meng Xing stop and wait quietly for the little monster to narrate. 
Sure enough, Meng Zing's guess was right. This time the monsters invaded Nane City not just for food. Otherwise, strange monsters that can disguise themselves as humans will not be sent out, and new urban areas will not be targeted. They came here to rescue a monster, a monster imprisoned by the Public Security Bureau. Meng Xing said suspiciously. Warcraft is relatively rare among monsters. But how important is that magical beast that it deserves your efforts to rescue it? Quote. The little monster replied. That is a powerful magical beast with nine levels of spirituality. Humans want to obtain the power of that magical beast. Meng Xing raised his eyebrows. Get the power of Warcraft. The little monster explained. A few years ago, high-level human beings developed a method to seal Warcraft within the bodies of awakened people. After the awakened person seals the monster in his body, he can borrow the monster's huge spirituality and talent. Quote. Meng Xing couldn't help but say. This. Gain the power of a monster after sealing it inside your body. A Jinchuriki. According to the little monster, this is called a Jinchuriki, right? The little monster didn't understand what Jinchuriki meant, so she continued. Monsters naturally cannot allow such a strong man to appear in humans, so they must rescue or kill that monster. Meng Xing still had some doubts. How could this little monster know so much precious information? He felt that this little monster was dishonest, so he walked to the devil fruit tree, selected a devil fruit and threw it to the little monster. Eat it. The little monster hesitated for a moment, then opened its mouth and bit into it. After eating, it waited for the same pain as eating roses. But she didn't expect that kind of pain. Everyone's fruit, level C, can obtain the same high intelligence, learning ability, walking on two feet, natural lifespan and other unique human abilities as humans. C-level talent. Before she could try out this innate power, Meng Xing controlled Qinglian's inner fire to burn her sea of consciousness. The little monster was in so much pain that it couldn't move. It held its head and shouted for mercy. Meng Xing asked with a smile. Is what you just said true? The method of devouring is news from high-level human beings. How could a little monster like you know about it? The little monster endured the severe pain and explained. In the world of monsters, all information can be shared. Other monsters may keep it secret from humans, but I don't think I need to sacrifice my life for monsters. Emotions are a different kind of unfaithful monster. Under the burning fire of Qinglian's heart, no one has the time to lie. In order to test, Meng Xing changed his mind and asked again. Have you ever eaten anyone? The little monster shouted without thinking. I have eaten, but monsters eat humans just like humans eat animals. It is natural and natural. Meng Xing was sure that the little monster's information was true, and took back the burning of Qinglian's inner fire. This little monster cannot die yet, and it has great uses on its own. If this little monster can help hunters hunt monsters, wouldn't he get a lot of good spiritual corpses? Meng Xing stood up and frightened the little monster so much that it crouched down holding its head and yelled, Please forgive me, I was wrong. Meng Xing said with a smile. From now on, you will be my slave and you must live by my side as a human being. Now tell me everything you know. The little monster turned into a human under Meng Xing's gesture. Under the influence of the Renren fruit, she became more like a human this time. Instead of being pale at first, she became a pretty little girl. The little monster is an intelligent monster and has its own name, called a rattle. She now has a total of four talents. In addition to demonization, which all monsters are born with, there are also disguise, personification, viralization, and everyone fruit. She also became the first demon hunter in the Hunter Guild, nicknamed, Devil Bear. After she betrayed her own people without reservation, Meng Xing learned the hiding place of the monsters and their future plans. Meng Xing took out his mobile phone and posted the task on the Hunter Guild app. Demon Killing Order. Hunt the monsters hidden in Nane City. Mission Goal. Kill monsters disguised as humans. Mission Location. Dongdachao Bridge, East District, Harbor Shampoo Salon, East District, West District. Task Reward. Points are distributed according to the mass of the monster's corpse, 1 point for Stage F, 5 points for Stage E, 10 points for Stage D, 50 points for Stage C, and points for Stage B. Tilan's head was about to burst. The ashtray in front of him was already full of cigarette butts, and several cigarette butts spilled onto the table. 
These monsters hidden in Nane City are simply annoying mosquitoes in midsummer. It's harder to find than zero when the lights are on, and it's noisier than one when the lights are off. He twisted his hair into a ball, and his apprentice Lin Xiaochuan handed over a cup of hot tea distress Edley. Don't worry, master, take your time and you will eventually find those rats in the gutter. Tilin lit a cigarette again and stared with red bloodshot eyes. The higher-ups said yesterday that these things can disguise themselves as humans, and it's really difficult to find them in a crowd. More and more people have died recently, and the director issued a death order, and something must be harvested within a week. Quote. The people who were mutilated by monsters mentioned in the reports are just the tip of the iceberg. God knows how many monsters are hidden among the crowd. Lin Xiaochuan complained. I think Director Wei is just trying to trick you. Finding those things is like looking for a needle in a haystack. How can it be possible in a week? Tilin opened the Hunter Guild software irritably, wanting to send out a task to see if he could get the hunters to help. He really didn't want to use the Hunter Guild's power unless absolutely necessary. At this time, he saw a task set as top by the Hunter Guild, and the red font was particularly conspicuous. Demon Killing Order Kill the monsters hiding in Donghai City. Mission Goal Kill monsters disguised as humans. Tilin was shocked. He had only just learned that those monsters called pretenders could disguise themselves as humans. Does the guild know now? Even posted a mission. Continue reading, mission location. Tilin sat up suddenly, his heart was filled with turmoil, and his hands were trembling. Quick, call the police. Call the police now. Lin Xiaochuan said doubtfully. Master, do you know where those monsters are hiding? Tilin nodded repeatedly. Yes, hurry up, let's go now. Catch them off guard. East District, Harbor Lane. The streets here are dilapidated, and a row of old houses have plaques such as, hair salon, and, massage room. The ambiguous pink lights bring some light to the dirty streets. Most people in the East District know that this is a cheap brothel area, and most of the special workers are aunts in their 40s. Dozens of plaincloth esmen had already figured out the situation on this street. One of them said to Tilan suspiciously. Boss, are you sure those things are in there? Tilan originally didn't quite believe the Hunter Guild's information, but after seeing the closed rolling shutter door of the Harbor Shampoo Salon, he was completely convinced of the authenticity of the Hunter Guild's information. As the former director of the East District, every plant and tree in the East District is deeply engraved in my mind. Usually, the business of Harbor Shampoo Salon is good because there are more women in their 30s here. This is the hottest business hour, so why is it closed? Boss, the director already has a problem with you. If we forcefully break into a merchant's house, I'm afraid I'll slap a label on you. The plaincloth esman reminded in a low voice. Tilan glanced at him and made a gesture, and the plainclothes men immediately blocked the street and moved to surround the place and occupy the best fighting location. It can be seen that he is well trained. Tilan's arm transformed into a bison and directly tore the rolling shutter door apart. Several plainclothes men broke in and roared. Crack down on pornography. Everyone holds their heads in arms. The scene inside stunned everyone. The walls were stained with blood, as if paint had been spilled on them. Those romantic-dressed women were lying in a heap, their bodies in pieces here and there. The stench hurts everyone's sense of smell. The faces of the plainclothes men suddenly changed, the monster was really hiding here. How did Captain Tilan know that there were no clues in the investigation department? They had no time to admire Tilan, so they quickly took out their standard weapons and searched the hair salon in groups. Leader, no monsters were found. There are no leaders on the second floor either. There's a situation in the leader's basement. Tilan quickly walked to the basement with the plaincloth esmen around him. A dozen young women in cool clothes huddled in the utility room, looking at the plaincloth esmen in horror. Looks like a special worker here. A plainclothes man put down his guard and walked up to a dozen women. It's okay, don't be afraid, you are safe. Tilan suddenly shouted. Don't go there. The plainclothes man was stunned for a moment. But before he could recover, a woman had been demonized and turned into a mantis-like monster. The sharp claws struck at the plainclothes man. Tilan immediately transformed into a bison and went on a rampage, smashing the monster's head into pieces. The remaining monsters no longer pretended to be evil, 
they were all transformed into demons, and a fierce confrontation began in the dark basement. The levels of these monsters were not very high, most were E-level, and only two were D-level. Under Tilan's leadership, they were all killed. Leader, you are so amazing. You just created a monster den. The rescued plainclothes man flattered him. Tilan said expressionlessly. Tell the brothers it's time to work. A plainclothes man wearing headphones took out a communicator and sent a message. Before Tilan came to Harbor Lane, he had arranged for military attaches to keep an eye on all monster dens in the East District. Now that the authenticity of the Hunter Guild's mission has been confirmed, it's time to clean up the monsters. Leader, do you need to support your colleagues in the East District? Asked a plainclothes man. Tilan shook his head. No, go to the West District. We must clean up the monsters hiding in the city tonight. When Tilan saw the monsters disguised as ladies, his heart dropped. If I hadn't been too familiar with these gray places in the East District and knew that a girl of 17 or 18 would not do business here, I would have been deceived by the monsters. These monsters are completely different from the monsters I have seen before. Tonight's opponent is extremely intelligent. They will definitely communicate with each other, so act fast. If we don't make a sudden attack tonight to clean out all the monsters, it will be like a warning. The sheriff's department was completely busy tonight. Whether it was the military attaché of the general administration or the police officer in the station, they were all mobilized by Tilan. Tilan did have strong commanding ability, and he was definitely a famous general in ancient times. Under his command for several hours, the east and west districts have been cleared. Outskirts of North District. The van modified by the Public Security Bureau was driving at high speed on the road. Tilan sat in the passenger seat with a worried look on his face. Leader, would you like to take a rest? Tilan shook his head and urged, drive faster. Tilan, who had not rested for 24 hours, did not feel tired at all. The night was about to end, and he wasn't sure if the military attaches would be able to finish the work before the sun came up. After daybreak, citizens will start their activities. The monsters who know that they are in danger will probably jump over the wall in a panic. When they go crazy, they are likely to attack civilians. A bloody disaster is just around the corner. Arrive at the destination, Hongtao Scrap Collection Station. The military attaches changed their tiredness, their faces were filled with a chilling air, and their spirituality spread throughout their bodies. They were divided into three teams, carrying standard weapons and sneaking towards the scrap collection station on tiptoe. It's almost dawn, it's too late, attack by force. Tilan gave an order, and two powerful military attaches kicked open the large iron gate of the scrap collection station. The military attaches swarmed into the yard of the scrap collection station. However, the scene inside made their shouts of killing get stuck in their throats, and Tilan's eyes widened. There had just been a fierce battle here. The corpses of more than a dozen monsters were scattered on the mountains of waste piled in the yard. And in the center of those monster corpses stood a muscular man. Wearing a black European and American round hat, a black windbreaker and black men's leather pants. On his face was a black leather mask that covered his eyes and nose. It's a bit like Zorro's outfit in the movie. It's just that he didn't hold a pistol in his hand, his hand was a cannon barrel, which should be his innate ability. There is no doubt that these monsters were solved by this mysterious man. The first ray of dawn tore through the dark night and shone on the big man, which made him look like a knight errant. The big man was stunned when he saw Tilan, and then he smiled meaningfully, showing two rows of teeth blackened by cigarette smoke. I gave it to you. After speaking, the big man jumped off the scrap pile, got into a black commercial vehicle without a license plate, and drove quickly away from the scrap collection station. Leader, do you want to pursue me? A military attaché asked. Tilan came back to his senses and said quickly. No, leave him alone and go to the next target. He turned and ran towards the van. It was dawn and it was too late. Suddenly, his cell phone rang, and he took it out to take a look. That was news from the Hunter Guild. Demon killing order. Kill the monsters hiding in Donghai City. Task status. Completed. Tilan paused and looked at the pedestrians and vehicles appearing on the street one after another, his face filled with astonishment. Have all the monsters lurking in the East China Sea been wiped out? Did a hunter do it? Tilan was in a trance for a while, 
and his body, which had been tense all night, completely relaxed. Leader, what's wrong? A military attaché asked in confusion. Tilan breathed a sigh of relief. Go back to the headquarters. The military attaches did not dare to ask any more questions, and they got on the car back to the headquarters with Tilan. Tilan said nothing on the way, frowning and thinking about problems that he had not thought of tonight. Doesn't the Hunter Guild not want to be exposed? Hunting monsters is indeed one of the rules of the Hunter's Guild, but why risk exposure and engage in activities in the city? There are monsters in the wild, so the Guild is clearly trying to save this city. Shouldn't this extraordinary force only care about its own development and not take the common people seriously? Tilan looked complicated and murmured to himself. What kind of existence is the Hunter Guild? The Public Security Bureau will never allow supernatural forces to exist. I have to find a way to erase the traces of the Hunter's activities tonight. In Jinmu Cafe, Meng Xing sat by the window, and the little monster rattle sat opposite. Meng Xing pushed the fruit mousse cake to the rattle. Tell me, what are the monsters, next plans? The bell was still in shock, but all the more than 800 monsters lurking in the South China Sea were cleared overnight. This is simply unbelievable. According to the information from the monsters, the sheriff of Nane City does not yet have such strength, and the Hunter's Guild must have played a significant role in it. Now she is also a member of the extraordinary forces of mankind. Rattle had no reservations, shook his head and said. The original plan was for the pretenders to cooperate with the monsters outside the city and capture Nane in one fell swoop. But now that the pretenders have been destroyed, I don't know what their next plan is. Quote. Meng Xing understood and pointed to the fruit mousse cake. Eat quickly. Rattle licked his lips, took a small taste, and his eyes immediately lit up. Tasty. It was delicious. It's so fragrant, more fragrant than human flesh. Can I eat it every day in the future? Then he stuffed it into his mouth with big mouthfuls, and his little ears moved. Meng Xing touched Rattle's little head lovingly. Eat more. The rattle sweetly revealed its two little tiger teeth. Brother, don't you want to eat? This scene of, brother and sister harmonious made the surrounding guests smile involuntarily. Then, Meng Xing stuffed a mobile phone into Rattle's head and said with a smile. You just need to eat. Only when you are full can you have the strength to escape. Okay. E.H. Escape. Rattle's smile solidified. Meng Xing opened the notebook in front of him and said while writing. I have informed the sheriff's department that a thief stole my phone. The thief is very young and I suspect there is a criminal gang behind her that forces children to steal. I've secured the thief, and the sheriffs will be here soon. Quote. Rattle stared at the cream on his face and said in disbelief. What did you say? What do you mean? Meng Xing raised his head calmly, as if he had done something insignificant. You guessed it right, you are the thief. But you are a monster and you dare not accept the investigation of the Public Security Bureau, so you become a monster and try your best to escape from the city. Remember to contact me after you leave the city and find the monster organization. Don't lose your phone. If I can't contact you, you will die. Quote. The ringer smiled forcefully. You, you're not joking, are you? Meng Xing's sincere eyes made Rattle panic in his heart. I deliberately let some monsters go last night, and you weren't the only one who escaped the Public Security Bureau's purge. So you don't have to worry about the monsters outside the city suspecting you are a spy. Quote. Rattle immediately became alert and glanced around with a pair of big grape-like eyes. Sure enough, he found several police officers outside the door walking towards the coffee shop. Meng Xing lowered his head and continued to write and draw. Run, if you get caught by the sheriff I'll kill you. Wrangling felt that the man in front of her was a devil. The sheriffs walked in, eyes locked on the rattle. Rattle didn't dare to be careless, so he jumped up from the sofa and ran as fast as he could towards the back door. The sheriffs gave chase. Meng Xing glanced lightly and sipped his coffee. I hope Rattle can escape from the city smoothly, otherwise I will waste a devil fruit and lose a monster spy. There was greed in his eyes. The spirituality contained in the corpse of the monster is really of high quality. He wants to bury all those things outside the city. Afternoon, Nane Public Security Bureau, Director's Office. A woman in her late twenties was leaning over the desk reviewing documents. With her tall figure, cool face, and slender thighs, she can definitely be called a super lady. 
A white sheriff's uniform top, black tights and high leather boots can completely satisfy all the fantasies of some otakus who love, investigators. The woman's name is Wei Na, the current director of the General Bureau of Public Security. A level combat talent, eighth level spirituality. Dong dong dong. There was a knock on the door. Enter, Wei Na put down her pen, straightened up and crossed her legs, looking at the approaching sheriff indifferently. The sheriff secretly glanced at Wei Na's two long, round legs stacked together and said respectfully. Director, after last night's efforts, the monsters in the South China Sea have been cleared away. Wei Na quickly concealed her shock and asked with a frown. All the monsters were eliminated overnight. Where is Tilan? Why don't you report the work in person? The sheriff handed over a document and replied. Captain Iron is doing the final finishing work. He has been busy all night and hasn't had time to rest. He may report to you tomorrow. Wei Na took the document and glanced at it. Report on the pretender incident in Nane City. He waved the sheriff away. After they left, Wei Na showed an incredible expression. I gave him a week to end this cholera and he did it in a day. This. How is this possible? Tilan has made meritorious service again. He, the captain, is so stable. How can my brother be transferred to the General Bureau? Quote. She threw the report aside irritably, her face full of displeasure. Is it possible that he really has a prosperous official career? At this time, the cell phone rang, and the caller was Wei Ming, the unsatisfactory younger brother. Sister, how's that going for me? When can I join the general administration? Wei Ming spoke a bit loudly, which made Wei Na frown. Where are you? Why is the environment so noisy? Wei Ming. I'm singing. You don't know, sister, the police station is boring as hell. Those female police officers don't understand humor at all, I. Wei Na suppressed her anger. Who took you there? A man quickly answered the phone and said flatteringly. Don't worry, director. Wei Suo is happy. He will be delivered home safely. Listening to Ying Ying Yan Yan's voice on the other end of the phone, Wei Na's eyes turned cold. And who are you? The man hurriedly said. Director, my name is Ni San, the director of the organization department of the Eastern District Public Security Bureau. My subordinates are absolutely loyal to the Wei family. Wei Na said in a bad tone. You, a division level cadre, take the director to a place like that in broad daylight. You don't want to do it anymore, do you? Let Wei Ming answer the phone. Quote. The man panicked, why was it different from the script? Shouldn't these big families like loyal losers like themselves? Wei Ming picked up the phone. Oh sister, why are you so serious? Ni San is the most sensible person in the institute, don't be angry, haha. Ha. When I am transferred to the general administration, I still want to get Ni San there together. Quote. Wei Na could no longer hold back her anger. Tilan is doing meritorious service and you are having fun. Why are you arguing with him? Wei Ming said with a smile. I don't still have you, sister. What's the point of trying his best? He's just a little loser with no background. Wei Na was so angry that her plump breasts kept rising and falling, and the buttons of her white shirt were about to fall apart. Tilan took care of all the monsters in the South China Sea last night. This position is secure. I can't help you. Wei Ming was more than half awake and stuttered. Don't scare me, sister, what should I do? You can't ignore me. Wei Na said irritably. Find your own way. If you have the ability to pull him down, I will take care of you. Then hang up the phone. How can you really ignore this younger brother? She flipped through the report, hoping to find some clues. Crown KTV. Wei Ming drove away all the princesses and rubbed his hair. Tilan can't even find a stain on him, so what can I do to bring him down? Ni San said weakly at this time. Does concubine count? Wei Ming became more energetic, forget it. Ni San continued. New Era Furniture has a female salesperson named Do Yuba. I vaguely remember the day I met Do Yuba when I wanted to renovate the house, and I tried every means to sleep with her. Just when he was about to leave, Tilan gave him a warning not to harass that fool. What is this if not a concubine? In the afternoon. Mr. Ma, I'm going to Mr. Meng's place to have a look. Do Yuba smiled brightly at the boss, said hello and left with his small leather bag. The boss said nothing about this. The whole company knew that this woman was an old acquaintance of Mr. Meng, and it would be best to let her keep an eye on the construction schedule. 
After Do Yuba walked out of the door, he faintly felt something was wrong, and a sense of voyeurism enveloped him. She looked around and saw no one, so she just assumed she was being suspicious. Driving the luxury car I just bought towards the old city. An old black Jetta also started its engine at this moment and followed leisurely. Nissan, who acted as the driver, was full of indignation. I know this woman very well. There is a paralyzed old mother in the hospital to support. How can she have the money to buy a car? That car is not cheap. It looks like it was given to you by someone else. Quote. Who gave the car? Obviously, Tilan. This woman is definitely Tilan's mistress. Ni Sanyan laughed. With his salary in recent years, Tilan is probably reluctant to buy this kind of car, right? Let alone buying it for another woman. He must have taken bribes. Then he continued his analysis. She left before getting off work, and it is said that Tilan is not at the headquarters today either. Do you understand Wei Suo? What doesn't Wei Ming understand? He must have gone to have a tryst with Tilan. Wei Ming's face turned red with excitement. Hurry, chase her, don't let her find out. I have an intuition that I can find the stain on Tilan today. Nissan operated as fiercely as a tiger in the driver's seat. Don't worry, I studied investigation in the military academy. After all, there are specialties in the art industry. No matter how bad Nissan's character is, he is still good in the professional field. Do Yuba was just a sales executive and did not realize that he was being followed at all. Driving the car all the way to the old town. After half a month of hard work by construction workers, Meng Zing's garden manor has begun to take shape. Even the muddy paths have become asphalt. Such rapid engineering speed is impossible on earth. The labor force in this world is cheaper. If there hadn't been monsters causing trouble recently, we could work almost all night long. Wei Ming stuttered when he saw this scene. Is this from Tilan? Ni San sneered. That's the captain of the military attaché group. He's in charge of the entire city's military attaché force, so he's got a lot of money. Wei Ming began to long for the scenario where he could unseat Tilan and become a military attaché himself. Money, power, girls, whatever you want, you can have it. Wine pool and meat forest, feel free and at ease. Wei Ming took a deep breath. Bring on the security recorder and record everything. This will be used as evidence in court from now on. Nissan looked like his great revenge had been avenged. Okay. Do Yuba's red car stopped in front of a small courtyard. Wei and Ming also stopped the car at a distance, for fear of disturbing the situation. Nissan, take the recorder and record more videos here. I'll follow you to see what's going on. Wei Ming got out of the car and followed Do Yuba. Several workers found the two of them, and were not surprised at all. They just thought they were engineers sent by the superiors or something, and the workers continued to do their own things. Mengxing Courtyard. Meng Xing is checking the Hunter Guild app background. Since the Ladder of the Sun was planted, the guild's promotion efforts have become stronger, and there have been dozens more hunters in the past two days. They are all ordinary people who have failed to awaken, or have difficulty awakening to life and career. Since there is no energy from Green Lotus Earth Core Fire in the Stairway of the Sun, Virus Awakened Ones are not as easy to control as Devil Fruit Awakened Ones. So Meng Xing tightened their restrictions on the rules. You are not allowed to use viral talents in front of anyone. Even if you use viral talents, you need to wear a mask. Revenge is allowed, but unprovoked evil is not allowed. Even if some people disdain the rules set by Meng Xing, they are seeking death. They still don't know that the Hunter Guild app has positioning and monitoring functions. Suminmin will immediately contact Tilan and ask him to lead the military attaché to kill them. Killing the awakened criminals will also give Tilan more merit. Mr. Meng, the monster corpse has been loaded into the truck. Will it be transported tonight? Do Yuba asked respectfully lowering his head and not daring to look at Meng Zing's face. There are nearly a thousand monster corpses, and after Tilan's operation, more than 500 can be transported to Meng Xing. How to transport it is Do Yuba's job. Sure enough, professional matters should still be left to professionals, and Do Yuba did a great job. Meng Xing, who was lying on the recliner, showed approval. Meng Xing said, send it over tonight. By the way, is your mother okay? Do Yuba was stunned, and then felt a chill. Is this a threat? She raised her head eagerly. 
Master Meng, I will definitely complete the task. If something happens, I can commit suicide immediately and no one can ask me anything. It is quite dangerous to transport so many monster corpses. If caught by the sheriff, there is no explanation. Meng Xing smiled. Who do you think I am? There will be no security checkpoints on Dou Yuba's only road, not even traffic security officers, and Tilan is not a jobber. The only source of danger is Dou Yuba's stupidity and self-destruction. Meng Xing continued. Kindergarteners know that good children should have little red flowers. I can help your mother be transferred to Nane Medical University. The chance of recovery will be higher. The full name of Nane Medical University is the first affiliated hospital of Nane Medical University, which is the best hospital in Nane City. Whether ordinary people can go to that hospital for treatment depends on their fate, and it is difficult to find an expert number. Meng Xing remembered that a hunter named Du was the doctor there. With a little manipulation, Dr. Du could still arrange for a patient to be admitted without letting Dr. Du discover Do Yuba's identity. Do Yuba showed surprise. Really? Thank you Master Meng. Meng Xing said again. Children who do something wrong will also be punished, so just do it seriously. This sentence is considered a threat. In the past, Do Yuba still felt that he had a price tag and that he knew a lot of the secrets of the Hunter Guild, but this time he was completely exposed. Who? Huang Jia's angry shouts came from outside the door. A fight ensues. Not long after, Huang Jia carried a young man with oily hair and pink face into the yard. Brother, this kid is sneaking around at the door. How should we deal with it? Meng Xing's face suddenly darkened and he looked at Do Yuba. Your people. Do Yuba knelt down in panic. No. This is definitely not a worker from our company. That young man was Wei Ming. When he saw Meng Xing, he was also stunned. Who are you? Where is Tilin? Meng Xing frowned, Tilin. At this time, the phone rang, and it was a message from Sumanman. Wei Ming is the director of the Eastern District Public Security Station and the younger brother of Wei Na, the director of the Nane Public Security Bureau. Meng Xing's mind turned around and he quickly figured out what was going on. I was afraid that he was looking for trouble with Tilin but he didn't expect that he was looking in the wrong direction and met him. He glanced at Do Yuba meaningfully. Be careful next time when you walk, you won't even know if you have a tail on you. Do Yuba did not dare to speak and lowered his head. Where's Tilin? Let Tilin come see me. Wei Ming had a very bad attitude, and now he still thinks that Meng Xing and the others are from Tilin. Meng Xing sneered. How dare you yell and scream when you come to my place, palm mouth. Huang Jia was not used to it. His big mouth was not ambiguous at all, and it made Wei Ming, a guy with thin skin and tender flesh, have a swollen face. Meng Xing crossed his legs on the chair. Are you able to speak properly? Wei Ming covered his face, knelt on the ground, and looked at Meng Xing in horror. Can. Obviously, Wei Ming understood that Meng Xing had the final say here, and the people here were not the kind of people in the old city. Meng Xing reached out and touched Wei Ming's head. Who are you? Why are you here? There is no Tilin you were looking for here. Wei Ming hesitated. I made the wrong move. Meng Xing laughed, pointed at a devil fruit on Huang Jia's head and said. He is a guest. Pick some fruit to quench his thirst. When Meng Xing found out that this boy was the biological brother of Wei Na, the director of the General Administration of Public Security, his heart became filled with joy. In Nane City, who is the biggest imaginary enemy of the Hunter Guild? That must be the Sheriff's Department. The Public Security Bureau does not allow the existence of extraordinary forces in the city, nor does it allow any force that is not under its control to appear. This guy is a bargaining chip in future negotiations with the Public Security Bureau. Director General Wei Na's brother. Double the value. Huang Jia picked the fruit and handed it to Wei Ming. Have eaten. Wei Ming looked at the poor-looking fruit in front of him and felt a hundred reluctances in his heart. He took a breath and said loudly. Do you know who I am? I am the director of the Eastern District of the Public Security Bureau. If you stop your evil thoughts, I can forgive you for beating me. Huang Jia subconsciously took two steps back. The powerful image of the sheriff is deeply ingrained in Huang Jia's mind. And he beat up the director. His little gangster thinking has not been completely reversed. He swallowed. Brother, kill him. He has seen our faces and is a trouble. Meng Xing nodded regretfully. 
If you offend a director, and the director is still unwilling to accept our apology, then let's kill him. Wei Ming was scared. Will he be killed if he reveals his identity? These people seem to have a reason and ability to kill him. He still has a lot of girls he hasn't favored, so how can he be willing to die? No, no, no. I accept it. I eat it. Wei Ming picked up the fruit in his hand and ate it, staring at the murderous Huang Jia. Meng Xing waved his hand, signaling Huang Jia to stand still. After Wei Ming finished eating the fruit, he asked nervously. I've finished eating, is that okay? I will never retaliate against you, I swear. Like many people, he thought the fruit was some kind of illegal psychotropic drug, similar to certain millet. Wei Ming kept telling himself in his heart to stabilize them, wait until he returns to the institute to find someone to detoxify them, and then kill these turtles. At this moment, Wei Ming's eyes widened in shock. Jacket fruit. Sea level. Consume the whole body's spiritual energy and turn it into a jacket. No matter whether the target is an animal or a monster, as long as it is put on, it will become a completely controlled target. This fruit was selected by Meng Xing and given to Wei Ming. The jacket fruit is both powerful and useless. It seems that he has a strong ability to possess people, but if no one takes the initiative to wear a jacket, then he is just a jacket. Moreover, the ability of this fruit is a rare passive talent. It is difficult to detect this talent by the awakening platform when it is not transformed into a jacket. What Meng Xing wanted was this effect, which was equivalent to giving Wei Ming a poison, a poison controlled by Meng Xing. Wei Ming's eyes widened in horror. Was he awake? Awakened dual talents. He is not stupid, he immediately understood how Tilin awakened his dual talents. I can't escape the relationship with the young man in front of me who is about the same age as me. Meng Xing smiled and said. Okay, I've eaten the fruit, and we are friends. We will have to trouble each other in the future, so please do it. Wei Ming opened his mouth and said in disbelief. Can I go? Meng Xing nodded slightly. Wei Ming ran out of the courtyard as if running away. It's so weird here. Huang Jia looked at Wei Ming's leaving figure, feeling very uneasy and asked. Brother, can you let me go? Meng Xing glanced at him. Is it enough to kill just one director? Do you think the surveillance along the way is just for show? He has quite a lot of background. Wei Ming was panting from running, and almost climbed into the car with his weak legs. Mi San, who had already returned to the car to wait for Wei Ming, said doubtfully. What's wrong, Wei Suo, so much sweat? What did you see? Wei Ming stared at the location of the small courtyard in horror and urged. Drive, drive quickly. Mi San didn't dare to delay, started the car and drove towards the new city. Mi San kept talking excitedly along the way. You know, Wei Suo, Tilin is really greedy. This garden costs several thousand square meters. Corrupt officials. Tilin is a huge corrupt man. As long as we find out that the boss behind this place is Tilin, Tilin will be finished. Wei Ming took a long time to catch his breath and said to Ni San. Bring it to me and see. Wei Ming took the recorder and used the small screen that came with it to view the scene inside the garden, his brain running rapidly. He discovered Tilin's big secret. In this wave, he can not only kill Tilin, but also dig out all the secrets behind Tilin, and then use it as a stepping stone for promotion. Look at my sister saying I'm not doing my job properly. Wei Ming's uneasiness weakened as the car moved away from the old city. At this moment, Wei Ming's cell phone rang. He picked it up and checked the message. Delete all videos and do not let the second person know what happened today. Wei Ming was stunned for a moment, how did they know my mobile phone number? Shaking his head and putting the phone back, he sneered sarcastically. I admit that you are awesome, just one piece of fruit can make me. But what are you doing? Are you worthy of ordering me? You dare to hit me? Go back and let my sister kill you all. Wei Ming is arranging words to call Wei Na. Suddenly, his eyes widened in horror, and there was a fire in his brain burning his sea of consciousness. The heartbreaking pain made him scream, holding his head that was about to explode and wailing. When Ni San saw this incident, he immediately stopped the car and said nervously, Director, what's wrong with you? Wei Ming endured the pain and deleted the videos one by one with trembling fingers. Finally, the burning feeling left. He was sweating and panting heavily, and his phone rang again. Wei Ming quickly checked. Your mobile phone must not leave your body. 
Even if it is out of power, you must carry it with you with a power bank to charge it. Please keep it turned on, my friend. Wei Ming finally understood why they let him go. They have the ability to see everything about themselves through their mobile phones. Wei Ming's plan failed. Because he knew that if he said even half a word about those people, he would experience the death-like pain again. Ni San exclaimed, Director, why did you delete all the videos? Wei Ming grabbed Ni San's collar and almost roared. Forget everything I saw today. It was also the first time for Ni San to see Wei Ming lose his composure, and he nodded repeatedly. What a good director, I understand. Wei Ming lay in the passenger seat as if exhausted, his eyes filled with deathly silence. Wei Na stayed up all night, looking at Tilan's report and Tilan's files. Until early in the morning, she lay weakly on the office chair, her eyes empty. On the night when Tilan suppressed the pretenders, he did not commit any irregularities in the formation of his troops. He was definitely considered to be thoughtful, careful and courageous. During that whole night's work, Tilan didn't make any mistakes, and couldn't find any stain or tail. Even she doesn't have Tilan's ability. Wei Na took a deep breath. I always feel like something is wrong. I must be missing something. Wei Na took a cup of coffee, her mind became clearer, and she suddenly remembered an issue that she had ignored. Pretenders have dens all over the city. How could Tilan find all the dens in one night and destroy them quickly? It's unreasonable and wrong. Either the monster was originally arranged by Tilan, or someone told Tilan all this. What the report said was that someone discovered that the Harbor Shampoo Salon had not been open for several days, and Tilan was suspicious of it, and then followed the clues and so on. A bit fake. Tilan is hiding something. Wei Na was also an old police officer, and she had written this kind of report countless times when she was in Kyoto. Wei Na cheered up and picked up a pen to settle accounts. A new conclusion was drawn. Even if the entire city's police officers devoted themselves to clearing out the monsters, they would not be able to complete the entire work overnight. Wei Na frowned. The police force and time are not commensurate with each other, and he deliberately understated the number of military attaches and time used to clean up the east, west, and south districts. He wrote down the extra military attaches and time in the north district. At that time, the North District was probably in a vacuum without a military attaché. The sheriff of the North District also wanted to clean up the monsters. Quote. Wei Na showed a smile. This report is false. Her sensitive sense of smell allowed her to quickly locate several monster dens. She got up and walked towards the surveillance department. The sheriff on duty was sleeping, and Wei Na started to operate by herself. The sheriff on duty was awakened and his hair exploded when he saw Wei Na. Is the chief here? He quickly stood up and saluted. Good morning, director. Please sit down, director. Wei Na frowned. Why are there so many surveillance blind spots here? The sheriff glanced at it and replied. Many of these are in the suburbs and are not in the surveillance area at all, and some have been vandalized by pretenders. A smile appeared on Wei Na's lips. You go out to have breakfast. The sheriff knew that Wei Na was being watched by surveillance cameras, so he obediently turned around and left. Wei Na sat on the chair and continued to operate. Destroyed by monsters. Interesting. Wei Na spent the whole morning in the monitoring room. Wei Na has some abilities, and her vicious instincts honed over many years as a police officer allow her to find some seemingly ordinary people. After carefully checking the information, I found that none of those people were from the North District. They all stayed in the North District that night and returned to other districts the next day. After screening, she targeted two people. One is named Zhu Daijin, the owner of Daihao Nightclub, and the other is named Wang Shu, a teacher at Nane No. 1 Middle School. Because after leaving the North District, these two people appeared on Shandong Road that night. There is a bar on Shandong Road that belongs to Zhu Daijin. All unreasonable coincidences are often the answer. Wei Na began to make bold assumptions, almost absurd guesses. Tai Lin, Zhu Daijin, and Wang Shu, these three seemingly unrelated people have such the same root. What is it that I don't know about it? Quote. Wei Na suspected that Zhu Daijin was controlling everything behind the scenes. Zhu Daijin, a gangster, might really be able to help Tilan complete the task of clearing out monsters. 
It is very likely that Tilan's achievements over the years were aided by Zhu Daejin behind the scenes, in order to support a military attaché captain and reach into the Public Security Bureau. How to determine the clues? Wei Na rubbed her forehead and thought, and sneered for a while. Since you can't figure it out, just muddy the water and fish will naturally appear. Wei Na called Wei Ming. Sister, what's wrong? Wei Na didn't expect her brother to answer the phone so quickly. It seemed that there was no fooling around last night. Probably because he found it difficult to surpass Tilan, the child became anxious and started working hard, right? Wei Na smiled happily and said. Brother, take the sheriff of your place to Rasputin's bar tonight. Remember not to reveal any information about your visit to Rasputin's bar before departure. Quote. Wei Ming was bored for a while and asked. What's the matter? Wei Na also had no reservations about Wei Ming. I suspect that the person behind Tilan is Zhu Daejin. If it is confirmed, the military attaché captain will be yours. She did not dare to use military attachés. This matter had to be carried out secretly, so that Tilan could not get wind of it. Wei Na didn't know that as soon as she hung up the phone, Wei Ming sent a text message to Meng Xing. Brother, tonight my sister is taking the Eastern District Sheriff to Rasputin on a mission. I will obey you in everything. Can you please stop asking me to carry my mobile phone with me every day? The power bank broke this morning. I didn't even sleep well and ran out to buy a power bank. I really couldn't bear the excitement. Night, Rasputin Bar. Under the dazzling lights, the bar DJ in romantic clothes danced freely to the powerful music, stimulating the atmosphere of the whole place. Total indulgence for lonely men and women seeking excitement and comfort. Screams, fireworks, and champagne are venting dissatisfaction with the life of a social animal. Meng Xing didn't like such a noisy environment. He wore a mask of the crying ghost king and sat alone in the luxurious booth on the second floor, drinking wheat wine. Don't worry about looking weird in a crowd wearing a mask. He is not the only one wearing a mask in such a place, and masks are not just the privilege of hunters. Meng Xing's indifferent gaze swept across the dance floor, which had become the base camp of low-level hunters. Among the men and women wearing masks on the dance floor, many were low-level hunters who had acquired the talent of becoming viral. The tasks performed by these low-level hunters are not very difficult. It is nothing more than seeking information about spiritual items in various ways, or finding traces of fugitives from the awakened ones. Of course, if they could obtain spiritual items or hunt down awakened fugitives, the points converted into money would be enough to spend for a long time. A woman at the stairs on the second floor caught Meng Xing's attention. The woman has a good figure, and the tight-fitting suit fully reveals the curves of her body, with the front and back curved. He was wearing a cheap and rough mask on his face, and it was hard to tell whether his appearance was as stunning as his figure. It's not like she came here for excitement, otherwise she wouldn't have wrapped herself up tightly. Meng Xing smelled a dangerous aura on this woman. He knocked on the table and motioned for the bartender to come over. The person in charge is called Sister Hong, a very coquettish and attractive mature woman. She has a round figure and wears a small black suit with a large open front, revealing half of a black lace bra. When Sister Hong saw Meng Xing looking for her, she immediately walked over with a charming smile and twisted her waist. Sir, is there anything you need me to do? This man was specially ordered by the military master to take good care of him, so he didn't dare to act coquettishly like he did to other bosses. She bowed respectfully. Meng Xing could feel that this woman was also a, viral, hunter. It seems that she is Zhu Daejin's right-hand man, otherwise Zhu Daejin would not have gone to great lengths to get her into the hunter guild. Meng Xing glanced at the beauty in the suit at the top of the stairs. Sister Hong immediately understood and walked towards the beauty in the suit at the top of the stairs. Sister, are you alone? Sister Hong is from Chongqing, and she talks to the beauty in the suit with a spicy accent. The beauty in the suit is very cold and looks down on women like Sister Hong who are wandering around in the world. Sister Hong didn't care either, and said with a sweet smile. There's a boss over there who wants to treat my sister to a glass of wine to show off her face. The beauty in the suit was none other than Wei Na. She glanced at Meng Xing with a bit of disgust. She didn't like this kind of rich second generation young man. She rejected him several times, but in return she was treated hard by Sister Hong. 
Wei Na was afraid that this slut's endless entanglement would affect her plans for tonight, so she frowned and walked to sit next to Meng Xing. What she didn't expect was that Meng Xing didn't strike up a conversation, but just sipped the wheat wine quietly. Wei Na suffered from an occupational disease and glanced at Meng Xing. There was a sarcastic look in his eyes, and Meng Xing's drinking of wheat wine was too artificial. Play hard to get. Childish trick. Wei Na crossed her legs and looked at the crazy men and women on the dance floor in boredom. Meng Xing glanced at Wei Na slightly and was already sure that this woman was the woman near the peak of power in Nane City, the director of the General Bureau. He glanced at his watch, calculated the time, and finally started talking. You are different from ordinary women, you are very special. What Meng Xing wants to do is to delay time. Wei Na said with a smile. Then what kind of woman do you think I am? Meng Xing's mouth curved. A woman as strong as liquor. The boss-like words made Wei Na feel sick to her stomach, and she said with a hint of sarcasm. Comparing wine to women. You don't even know how to drink wine. That's not how you drink wheat wine. Meng Xing shook his head. This is the strongest wine, so naturally it has to be tasted well. Wei Na felt that Meng Xing was being mysterious. How is the 18% alcohol stronger? Meng Xing drank half the cup and said. The liquor that has a story is the liquor. Wei Na felt that Meng Xing was about to start some tricks to pick up girls, so she shook her head and smiled. Appreciate further details. Meng Xing asked. The money residents in the old city make in a year is not as much as those in power get in a day. The bitter taste in this wheat wine probably resembles the stories of the residents of the old city. Quote. Wei Na's eyes were a little mocking. To her, who is in a high position, these words sound like cowardly and useless complaints from people at the bottom. This metaphor will only make her feel that Meng Xing's cultural level is not high. There was no rush for the surprise inspection, but there was some time to break up with Meng Xing. From the perspective of her own director, she said. I don't think they are suffering very much. Although the superiors get more, they also bear corresponding obligations, don't they? You have to know that without the blessing of high-level officials, these people would not even be able to eat. Quote. Meng Xing raised the wheat wine in his hand. Do you know how wheat wine is made? Wei Na has lived in a honeypot since she was a child. How could she know about such rough things? She smiled. Please continue. Meng Xing shook half a cup of wheat wine in his hand. Wheat seedlings need to be soaked, and after they germinate, they are put under the sun. People will build a plastic greenhouse for the wheat seedlings outdoors to protect them from wind and rain. After three days, the malt is harvested for brewing. The wheat seedlings will continue to grow, but unfortunately they will never grow big, because there is always a sickle waiting to harvest them. Do the residents of the old city look like wheat seedlings, and do those in power count as sickles? Tell me, is the malt wine in my hand strong enough? Quote. Wei Na's brows suddenly knitted together. This sentence was very crazy and evil. According to the Ghost King Mask Man, he compared the superior to a butcher. Are ordinary people just pigs? After giving birth to batches of piglets, the New Year pig will have to accept the end of being served on the table. And their children start their lives over and over again. Wei Na subconsciously retorted. It's not as good as you said. Meng Xing took a sip of wine and said quietly. The residents of the old city still think that they have not worked hard enough until they die of poverty. They should be like the golden color of autumn covering the fields. No one ever tells them that they will never grow up no matter how hard they try. Because the sickle above them has even been thought about how the next generation will eat it. So much so that the rich and powerful in Xincheng district eat so much that their brains are full of fat. Quote. As a high-ranking person in power, Wei Na felt a little embarrassed when she was exposed in this way. He was obviously a strong man with a level and eighth level spirituality, but he was unable to fight back. Where is this talking about spirits? This is a complaint about the polarization of society over strong drinks. Have you ever chatted with a beautiful woman like this? Wei Na looked a little ugly. You tell stories like this to women in bars. Meng Xing glanced at his watch. It was almost time. He had been dragging Wei Na for a while. Meng Xing stood up and apologized. Maybe I was drunk. I'm really sorry. My story wasn't good enough. I'll say goodbye. After that, he left the second floor. 
Wei Na secretly said something strange, took out her mobile phone, and sent a text message. Quick, act. Soon, the door of Rasputin's bar became noisy, and one after another the sheriffs rushed in with flashlights. Spot checks. Turn on the lights, turn on the lights. The music is off. Sister Hong was a little panicked. What was going on? I didn't tell you about the inspection in advance. She hurriedly went up to him and smiled flatteringly at Ni San, who was leading the team. How come Director Ni is on the front line himself? Why don't you tell me in advance so that I can prepare some good wine for you? Ni San looked greedily at the beautiful mature woman in front of him, and suddenly felt a chill. He looked up and saw that Wei Na was on the second floor. Ni San immediately became serious. Check, please cooperate. Sister Hong nodded repeatedly and organized the staff to cooperate with the security officers in the inspection. Half an hour passed. Ni San walked towards Wei Na flatteringly. Leader, everything is normal. Only then did Sister Hong realize that the beauty in front of her was actually the leader of the Public Security Bureau. Wei Na was observing everyone's expressions when her cell phone rang. She glanced at the text message, her face changed drastically, and her pretty face was covered with frost. Wei Na walked down the stairs and asked Sister Hong with a sneer. Where's Zhu Daijin? Sister Hong said honestly. Mr. Zhu was seriously injured and is still in the hospital. Wei Na's eyes widened and she said after a while. Go back to the East District Sheriff's Office. In the car of the Public Security Bureau, Wei Na could not calm down for a long time. There was a fire at the East Precinct Sheriff's Office. Some people were unwilling to investigate the bar themselves, so they set fire to the police station and forced themselves to leave. Leader, here is Sister Hong's information. It was provided by the informant. Please review it. Wei Na took a look. This Hong Jia used to be confused with the Black Dragon Gang. Because of this, Sister Hong, who is very capable at work, was placed in the Rasputin bar, which was not very efficient, and could not be reused by Zhu Daijin. This matter was different from what she imagined. She asked unwillingly. Zhu Daijin is really injured. Ni San nodded. I checked. I was attacked by the Black Dragon Gang this afternoon and was seriously injured. Wei Na asked. Are you sure you were injured in the afternoon? How serious is the injury? Ni San nodded. I'm sure, I was sent to the hospital in the afternoon and was beaten to cerebral palsy. Wei Na was stunned, cerebral palsy. If so, the person who set the fire could not be Zhu Daijin. Moreover, Zhu Daijin's accident happened in the afternoon, which is even more impossible. Who set the fire? The people who burned down the police station are the same people who want to cover up the secret of Rusputin. Who else could this person be if he wasn't Zhu Daijin? Nane Medical University. My eldest brother is already like this. What else are you checking for? The mad wolf stood at the door of the ward and roared like crazy at the two police officers. The sheriff frowned. We are here to help you find the murderer. The mad wolf pointed outside the corridor and roared. The black dragon gang did it to those fools. Go find Zhou Ching. Go. A magistrate took a notebook and recorded. Zhou Ching, right. What are you doing? We will investigate. Another police officer whispered. The boss of the Black Dragon Gang, Zhou Ching. The two police officers were not really investigating, they just wanted to see if Zhu Daijin really had cerebral palsy. According to their observations, Zhu Daijin seemed to be in really bad condition, almost like a half-vegetative state. After the two police officers left, Mad Wolf returned to the ward, grabbed Zhu Daijin's arm and burst into tears. Brother, I will definitely kill all those fools. Kill them all. I will definitely accompany you when you go out from now on, and I won't leave until you die. Ah wolf. Crazy wolf suddenly raised his head, Zhu Daijin spoke. Brother. How are you? Crazy wolf ran out of the ward with all his strength. Dr. Du. Dr. Du. My elder brother called my name. Ten minutes later, Zhu Daijin was in the ward. Zhu Daijin had already sat up. Crazy wolf held Dr. Du's hand and kept crying. Dr. Du, you are truly a miracle doctor. From now on, my life, crazy wolf, will be yours. Dr. Du's expression was normal. Ever since he obtained the devil fruit, his surgery had never been unsuccessful. He said calmly, your eldest brother has too many injuries on his body. His head and spine are no longer seriously injured. The rest of the injuries should be recovered slowly. 
Zhu Dajin struggled to sit up. Dr. Du, you said you cured my cerebral palsy, does that mean you deprived me of my right to be an idiot? Dr. Du frowned and checked Zhu Dajin's head. No, if you ask this question, it means I haven't completely cured you. Zhu Dajin happily opened Dr. Du's hand. Just kidding, don't take it so seriously, ha ha ha. Dr. Du left expressionlessly. He had another patient today, an old lady. The crazy wolf was crying and laughing, eating snot and grinning. Boss, you're okay, hee hee, you're okay. When you fully recover, we will wipe out the Black Dragon Gang. Quote. Zhu Dajin grinned. Black Dragon Gang. There will be no more Black Dragon Gang. Crazy Wolf was stunned for a moment and planned to call back Dr. Du. His boss was definitely not very good at it. Zhu Dajin snorted coldly. Do you really think the Black Dragon Gang can touch me? I did this on purpose. Yesterday morning, I suddenly received an exclusive mission from the guild. The task is simple. First, create the Rasputin Bar as a place secretly controlled by the Black Dragon Gang. This is not difficult. His right-hand assistant, Sister Hong, was once the mistress of a leader of the Black Dragon Gang and knew many members of the Black Dragon Gang. The man lost money in gambling and sold Sister Hong to Daihao Nightclub, where Zhu Daijin took good care of her. That day, Sister Hong used her escort princess to hook up many members of the Black Dragon Gang to go to Rasputin to be cool. Second, get beaten yourself. If he shows up in the underground parking lot on purpose, he will be beaten up by members of the Black Dragon Gang. The guild said that they might beat him half to death, but Zhu Daijin didn't expect to be beaten into such a bare shape. Fortunately, Dr. Du was very skilled in medicine. As for the mission rewards, they were so exciting to him. Assist Zhu Daijin to obtain all the territory of the Black Dragon Gang. He actually didn't know how the guild would operate or its intentions, but he believed in the guild. Sheriff's Department Detention Facility. The gangster who set fire to the Public Security Bureau has been caught and locked up in the interrogation room. One of them had red hair and the other had green hair. They were interrogated separately. The two magistrates sat at the interrogation table and interrogated for a long time but came up with no result. After waiting for a long time, Wei Na finally couldn't stand the immaturity of the two police officers and walked into the interrogation room. Stop being so harsh, do you really think someone can save you? The red-haired eyes kept scanning Wei Na's chest, and said with a lewd smile, You have no idea who is above me. Wait until I go out, and my brother will take you to have a good time. Wei Na signaled the two police officers to leave with a dark face. Wei Na walked up to the CCTV, used her powers to short-circuit it, and then sat on a chair. This is your last chance. Who gave you the courage to burn down the police station? Hong Mao licked his lips and spread his palms on the table. Sister, let me touch my hand, and I will tell you. Wei Na's eyes were so cold that the temperature of the entire interrogation room dropped. Okay. After saying that, an ice thorn thinner than a needle appeared on his index finger and pierced Hong Mao's palm directly. What? Hong Mao screamed and looked at Wei Na in disbelief. How dare you use torture? Another ice thorn appeared in Wei Na's hand and pinned Hong Mao's hand directly to the table. Don't worry, my ice spikes are so thin that you can't even detect the damage. Big beads of sweat continued to fall from the red-haired head, and he shouted. I said, I said. Wei Na crossed her legs and said disdainfully. I thought he was a man, but he turned out to be a coward. Please explain clearly. Hong Mao gasped for air, swallowed and said. It's my boss. My boss asked me to do this. Wei Na sneered. Go on, who is your boss and why do you let him do this? Hong Mao didn't dare to be disobedient and said everything like he was pouring beans. My boss is the director of Jinji Jingwang KTV. He found me yesterday and gave me 200,000 yuan to burn down the police station. The splendid KTV is the headquarters of the Black Dragon Gang. What does this matter have to do with the Black Dragon Gang? During this surprise inspection of Rasputin, Wei Na discovered the problem in Rasputin. Rasputin turned out to have many members of the Black Dragon Gang. Could it be that Sister Hong was colluding with the Black Dragon Gang and was discovered by herself, so the Black Dragon Gang burned down the security station and forced herself to leave Rasputin to prevent herself from discovering a bigger secret? Wei Na is not interested in gang warfare. She raised her eyebrows slightly. That's it. Hong Mao nodded desperately. 
Yes. He also said that he would ask Tilan, the military attaché captain, to fish me out. Wei Na stared at Hong Mao, trying to find any clues on his face, but Hong Mao didn't look like he was lying. Is Tilan working so hard for the Black Dragon Gang? Wei Na murmured. My previous speculation must have been wrong. I didn't expect that I discovered Tilan's real secret by accident. The surprise inspection did muddy the waters and the fish did emerge. Whether Tilan is colluding with the Daihao nightclub or the Black Dragon Gang, he is looking for death. Wei Na stood up and said. I hope you will be responsible for what you say. If your friend in the interrogation room next door does not say this, your life will not be easy. Wei Na was actually certain that her eyes were ruthless and it was impossible for anyone to lie from yesterday to now. She secretly said. Why does this feel like a round? A very rough round. Then Wei Na shook her head. Unless the person running the game knew in advance that I was going to raid Rasputin at night. But only Wei Ming and I know about this. Quote. Wei Na felt confident that Tilan and the Black Dragon Gang were already linked in her heart. The people behind Tilan are the Black Dragon Gang. Even if Wei Na tried hard, she would never have thought that there was a hunter from Meng Xing in the Black Dragon Gang, nor would she have thought that she would be betrayed by her younger brother and walk step by step into the hole dug by Meng Xing. Meng Xing is preparing a plan to kill two birds with one stone. Kill the Black Dragon Gang and put the entire underground power in the South China Sea under the control of the Hunter Guild. Attacking Wei Na and weakening her status in the Public Security Bureau gave Tilan the confidence to challenge her. Last night, we conducted a raid on pornography and found a gambling market at Xinglong KTV. Black Dragon Supreme Entertainment Group has recently had three KTVs and five bathing centers sealed, and its leadership is under investigation. Captain Tilan of the Military Attaché Brigade, you have accomplished another great feat. Rescued 32 girls who were forced into prostitution. Meng Xing was drinking coffee and reading the newspaper at Jinmu Cafe, showing a knowing smile. Wei Na probably recognized Tilan as a member of the Black Dragon Gang and assigned Tilan to be the main force in this anti-gang operation. Maybe she still hasn't figured out why Tilan works so hard to suppress his boss, right? Yi Yunyan, who was sitting in front of Meng Xing, admired. You are really ruthless in this move. You are using the Public Security Bureau to rectify the Black Dragon Gang. The Black Dragon Gang will probably find a way to counterattack soon. Meng Xing shook his head. This game is easy to see through, but Wei Na is too anxious to kill Tilan, and she trusts the people around her too much. Family affection and desire blinded her eyes, otherwise it would not have been so easy. Quote. At this time, Su Man Man wearing a demon fox mask came down from upstairs, and Yi Yunyan nodded slightly at her. Although Su Man Man lives in a coffee shop, Yi Yunyan has never seen her face. Both of them know the rules very well. Su Man Man handed the phone to Meng Xing. Is this kind of video okay? The popularity has already increased, but it's a pity that overseas video accounts have been banned. Meng Xing pushed the fruit mousse cake in front of him to Su Man Man, and then clicked on the video. These videos are nothing more than two things. One is a video of the Eastern District Sheriff inspecting Rasputin for no reason. Afterwards, in the cold bar, Sister Hong cried so hard. He kept saying that Rasputin's consumption was low, there were no violations, and he was a conscientious merchant. The inspection cost Rasputin's bar tens of thousands in lost business. Another video captured the scene of the fire at the security station that night from the perspective of a passerby. When the two videos are put together, the content is intriguing. It is easy to think of the Eastern District Sheriff who went to the Conscience Bar to try to find something to increase his performance. He neglected his duties and caused a fire in the Sheriff's Station. Meng Xing nodded. Public opinion can make Wei Na uncomfortable for a while. Wei Na will suspect that this video is a counterattack by the Black Dragon Gang. Their bridges cannot be torn down. Quote. The popularity of this video has gone up. Even if Sumanman's overseas account is banned, many marketing accounts will follow suit and gain popularity. Sumanman put down the cake and hesitated to say something. Meng Xing smiled. If you have something to say, just tell me. You did this beautifully. If you want any reward, just tell me. Sumanman asked carefully. Can I take a day off? I want to go shopping. Meng Xing was stunned, and suddenly felt that he was a bit of a black-hearted boss. 
Since the creation of the Hunter Guild, Sumanman has been busy, busier than him. Sumanman has become very beautiful. A girl has never left the house after becoming very beautiful. How is this different from doing homework at home with makeup on? Besides, shopping is a girl's nature. Meng Xing showed some guilt on his face and apologized very sincerely. I'm sorry, I ignored you. He took out a bank card from his pocket and handed it to Sumanman. Take the flowers and don't come back until they're all spent. There was great surprise in Sumanman's beautiful eyes, and she said with a smile. Okay. Thank you boss. At this time, Sumanman glanced at the phone and his expression became strange. Tilan wants to see you, do you want to refuse? Needless to say, he knew what Tilan was looking for. Meng Xing said. No need to refuse, see you. Not a specialty seafood buffet restaurant, private rooms. Tilan had been waiting in the box for a long time. His face was ugly. Too many things had happened in the past two days. A gangster who came from nowhere slandered himself as a member of the Black Dragon Gang. In order to prove his innocence, he personally led a team to clean up the Black Dragon Gang's premises. Public opinion videos of the police station being burned down and the police officer checking Rasputin for no reason spread among the people, causing Wei not to be blamed by her superiors. Tilan saw a familiar figure in the video of Rasputin Bar, the mask of the crying ghost king, the president. The door to the private room was pushed open, revealing the familiar mask of the crying ghost king, the familiar black sportswear, and the hood still on his head. Tilan wanted to say a lot, but after seeing Meng Xing in person, he couldn't say anything. It wasn't until Meng Xing sat on the chair that he spoke first. What's up? Tilan organized the following languages. Did you burn down the police station? Meng Xing nodded. Yes. Tilan frowned and asked in a deep voice. You made those videos too. Meng Xing still does not deny. Wei Na should be busy resolving public opinion during this time, right? Tilan took a deep breath. So, those two Black Dragon Gang gangsters who accused me of colluding with the Black Dragon Gang were also your work. Meng Xing was very candid. Yes, Wei Na will work harder to suppress the Black Dragon Gang. Tilan looked ugly and asked. You've done so much, what do you want? Meng Xing said calmly. You shouldn't ask so many questions. Just think that I'm targeting Wei Na. Tilan frowned and asked. Wei Na offended you. Meng Xing nodded. This woman is very smart. She has noticed Rasputin. If you let her investigate further, she will find the guild. Meng Xing said curiously. Why do you care so much about Wei Na? You should know that Wei Na has always wanted to drive you away and let Wei Ming be the captain of the military attaché group, right? Quote. Tilan stared. Because this is throwing dirty water on the sheriff's department. Tilan didn't care what kind of trouble Wei Na would get into, he only cared about the Public Security Bureau. Meng Xing smiled playfully. I wonder if you would have glared at Wei Na like this the day the guild was investigated. Tilan was stunned and couldn't say a word. If it weren't for the Hunter's Guild, Nane would have been plunged into a monster crisis. That morning, a strong man who looked like Zoro kept appearing in Tilan's mind. He wanted to become a life and death friend with such a man. There should be many such people in the Hunter Guild. Tilan clenched his fists and loosened them weakly, his eyes full of struggle. Can't the Guild avoid committing crimes? I'm a peace officer, I. The temperature in the box rose suddenly. Behind the mask, Meng Xing's expression turned cold, and the corners of his mouth drew an extremely sinister arc. Did you forget something? The frightening green flames burned on the walls of the box climbed onto the dining table, and surrounded the iron forest like poisonous snakes. Meng Xing stood up slowly. Do you remember what I told you when we first met? Cold sweat broke out on Tilan's forehead, how could he not remember? Welcome to the Hunter Guild, don't think about betrayal, you can't afford the price. Meng Xing walked up to Tilan, and Tilan could see the coldness in his eyes clearly. Am I too kind to you, making you think I'm too talkative? Meng Xing grabbed Tilan's neck and looked closely at Tilan with cold eyes. Tilan, I gave you your power, don't think I'm doing charity. Tilan was so caught by Meng Xing that he couldn't breathe, and his face turned red from holding back. Meng Xing's strength exceeded Tilan's imagination. Tilan looked at Meng Xing in horror and struggled to speak. I know I owe it to the guild. Meng Xing sneered and let go of his hand, straightening up. 
you're pretty smart and didn't sneeze at me. If Tilin had dared to turn into a bison and resist just now, Meng Xing would kill Tilin without mercy. Meng Xing appreciates Tilin's ability. But no matter how capable this person is, if he doesn't obey orders, he might as well be buried. The guild wants useful hunters, not just vigilantes. Meng Xing came here to see Tilin's attitude. Let's see if he wants to have a showdown with himself because of his loyalty to the Public Security Bureau. Now it seems that Tilin still wants to live and still wants to be the captain of the military attaché. Meng Xing said, it's okay if you want to be an upright peace officer. Likewise, you have to remember your identity as a hunter, otherwise I wouldn't mind changing to a military attaché captain. Quote. After that, Meng Xing left the private room. Tilin opened a bottle of beer and poured it into his stomach, his eyes filled with helplessness. He is a grateful person, and he is grateful to Meng Xing for giving him a new life. But he is also a person who is loyal to the security bureau, as he swore an oath under the holy emblem. After all, the Hunters Guild had a conflict with the Public Security Bureau. Tilin met Meng Xing this time and wanted to persuade Meng Xing not to behave inappropriately, but Meng Xing's attitude made him give up. This man is too domineering. He was not afraid that Meng Xing would kill him, otherwise he would not risk his life to meet with Meng Xing. He was afraid that someone would be the captain of the military attaché group after his death. He was not sure whether the military attaché captain would cause harm to the Public Security Bureau for the Hunter Guild. I am also afraid that the military attaché captain is someone like Wei Ming, who uses his power to prey on the people. Speaking of which, he is also a fool who came out of the old city. At night, Suminmin came out of the mall carrying seven or eight bulging shopping bags. Her dress no longer covered herself as tightly as before. Suspenders, small hot pants, and crystal high heels reveal a small waist and slender thighs. The extremely high return rate made her a little embarrassed. All this is like a dream, a dream in which an ugly duckling turns into a white swan. The most loyal person to Meng Xing in the entire Hunter Guild is definitely Su Manman. When she became a great beauty, she did not forget her roots or that she came from the old city. Apart from spending a lot on clothes, she was still very frugal in everything else. She walked towards a 5 yuan ramen restaurant. Girl, okay, I haven't eaten in three days. Suminman turned around and saw an old beggar in ragged clothes, sitting feebly on the curb. The old beggar had a broken arm, and he was surrounded by seven or eight wild cats. Suminman didn't respond and walked straight across the street into the ramen shop. The old beggar sighed, and a wild cat climbed on him and meowed at him. The old beggar stroked the wild cat's head. Good boy, just be patient. We will have something to eat when that kid comes back. After a while, the old beggar saw Suminman running over from across the road carrying a bowl of packed ramen. In the surprised eyes of the old beggar, Suminman squatted in front of him, opened the lid of the plastic bucket, took out the ramen noodles and put them to the old beggar's mouth. The old beggar was so hungry that he swallowed in big mouths and shivered from being burned. Suminman looked at the old beggar apologetically, blew on the ramen with his mouth, and put it into the old beggar's mouth again. The old beggar felt embarrassed. Girl, you put it on my lap and I'll eat it myself. Suminman held the ramen bucket and placed it on the old beggar's lap. The old beggar picked up a chopstick of ramen with one arm and took a bite, then picked up another chopstick and put it on the ground. A few wild cats raised their tails to eat ramen, and the old beggar shared a bowl of ramen with the wild cats. Suminman could see that the old beggar was very hungry, and said in confusion. You haven't eaten enough yourself, so why are you feeding stray cats? The old beggar smiled. I am a homeless cat, but my cat is not a stray cat. Thank you girl, otherwise I would be starving with my cat tonight. Quote. Suminman waved his hand and walked into the ramen shop again. Not long after, a young man in rags walked up to the old beggar, carrying a bag of steamed buns and half a roast chicken, and said as if asking for credit. Master, I brought food back. Huh, where did you get the ramen? The old beggar didn't look good on the young man and cursed angrily. You want to starve your master to death. Fortunately, a beautiful woman brought you food. The young man laughed loudly. Master, are you crazy about women? Beautiful women will give you, an old beggar, something to eat. The old beggar retorted. She even fed me. The young man smiled and shook his head, 
sat next to the old beggar and ate the buns. The old beggar pointed across the road and said, Look, it's her. The young man followed the old beggar's gaze and his eyes immediately straightened. He had the bun in his mouth and even forgot to chew it. So beautiful, he has never seen such a beautiful girl. Sumanman looked around at the car, trotted all the way to the old beggar, and handed him a bowl of ramen. I'm afraid you and your cat won't have enough to eat. The more the old beggar looked at Sumanman, the more he liked him. He smiled and said. Thank you, girl. My incompetent apprentice brought me food. You haven't eaten yet. Sumanman glanced at the young beggar who kept staring at him, and frowned in disgust. He took out a few hundred yuan from his pocket and stuffed it into the old beggar's hand, and said playfully. Buy cat food for the cat. After that, he walked to Kamu Cafe carrying ramen. The young man looked at Sumanman swaying back and jumped up like a monkey. Master, I like this girl so much. She's so kind. No, I'm going to die. The old beggar sneered. Don't you think about how bad you are. Does this girl like you? The young man was unconvinced. What's wrong with me? I've almost learned everything you taught me. I'm a master after all. How am I not worthy of her? The old beggar's face became serious. Don't show off, or you'll lose an arm like me. The young man promised. Okay, master, I'll get you some wine. After saying that, he got up and followed Sumanman. The young man's movements were so strange that Sumanman didn't realize that he was being followed. It was already late at night when we reached Jinmu Cafe, and the door was already locked. Sumanman took out the key, opened the door and walked in. The young beggar returned to the old beggar excitedly. He he he, I already know where she lives. I will follow her every day and be her guardian knight. The old beggar cursed angrily. I knew right away that you had bad intentions. Let me tell you, if you dare to disturb that girl's life, I will kill you with my own hands. The young beggar handed the old beggar a bottle of white wine and said with a smile. Don't worry, don't worry, I won't bully her. He he, she is quite far away from here. I will go to Jinmu Cafe to wait for her early tomorrow morning. Quote. The old beggar squirted out a mouthful of wine and walked far away, his eyes widened. What did you say? Where did you say that girl lives? The young beggar scratched his head. Jinmu Cafe, he must be the waiter there. The old beggar grabbed the young beggar and stared at him. The young man could clearly see the fear in the old beggar's eyes. No, you, stay away from that place. Don't see that girl again. Brother, the monsters plan to launch an siege on Nane in a week. They will block all roads in the South China Sea, and the South China Sea will be an isolated city by then. Quote. This is the message of the little monster ringing the bell. In the early morning, Meng Xing was sitting in the coffee shop reading a book. He picked up his phone to check after hearing the beep. Meng Xing smiled slightly. It's a lot faster than expected, but it doesn't matter. The spiritual power provided by the last batch of pretenders planted more than 10 devil fruits. In order to resist this monster invasion, Meng Xing only kept three devil fruits, and pushed all the rest to the residents of Nane City. According to the background display, the Hunter Guild now has 200 E-Virus Hunters and 30 C-Level Devil Fruit Hunters. If the monsters knew that there were so many masters in Nane City, they would not dare to act so rashly. As long as these monsters dare to attack the city, Meng Xing is sure to bury them all. Meng Xing took out his notebook from his backpack and turned to the latest page. Pick up your pen and write on this page. The Hunter's Guild has gradually gotten back on track. The three systems of tasks, transactions, and chat have been completely improved. New missions will be released every day, not only to hunt awakened criminals and search for spiritual items, but also to collect various intelligence. Most of the mission rewards are points, which can be exchanged for extraordinary plants using the trading system. The hottest and most coveted thing in the trading mall is a devil fruit. This was followed by a few petunias, the stairway to the sun. I can run a guild with hundreds of people now, but what about when there are thousands or tens of thousands of people in the future? I need to find some management talents. The hunter guild needs elders. Tilan is good, but it's a pity that he is a peace officer. Zhu Daijin. Forget it, this kind of gangster brother is not loyal enough. Yi Union is to be determined. In the express delivery department, with the help of Tilan, Dou Yuba and Huang Jia did a pretty good job, but they should be more perfect. There is still a very difficult problem. 
The vegetable fields in the old city must be guarded by someone. That is the foundation of the hunter's guild. But which hunter is suitable? These hunters all have families and businesses, and none of them are suitable to guard Meng Xing's garden every day. Meng Xing drew a circle on the word, guard and guardian. He held the pen against his forehead and frowned slightly. At this time, Meng Xing's thoughts were interrupted by the voice of the coffee waiter Lin Lin. That person is really strange. I seem to see him all the time lately. I don't know what he does. Meng Xing followed Lin Lin's gaze and saw a young man in ragged clothes sitting a hundred meters away from the door. Beggar. Meng Xing shook his head. This man was very energetic and did not look like a beggar. This man looked into the cafe from time to time, as if he was looking for someone. Meng Xing paused and knocked on the table. Yi Yunyan, who had been watching Meng Xing, immediately came over. Sir, what are your orders? Meng Xing glanced at the young man and said. Go and see. Yi Yunyan bowed slightly, took out 200 yuan from the counter and walked out the door. Meng Xing lowered his head and continued to write and draw. Money. The hunter guild should have its own industry. Next, you should hand over your capital flow to professionals for operation. Yi Yunyan is pretty good. The branches of the hunter guild can't all rely on Zhu Dajin's venue. Maybe I should have a bar that only belongs to hunters. If I open my own express company, the express delivery department will be complete. Money, money is important now. Meng Xing carefully sorted out every step of the future development of the hunter guild, treating every hunter as a chess piece and maximizing its role. His ideas became clearer and clearer, and he methodically built a huge extraordinary organization. Yi Yunyan came back and sat in front of Meng Xing with a strange look on his face. That person didn't come here specifically to beg. He seemed to be looking for someone. Yi Yunyan is gentle to others and easily gains the trust of others. She is an out-and-out -out social butterfly. The young beggar who was inexperienced in the world had no defense against Yi Yunyan and could easily be tricked. Meng Xing raised his eyebrows and asked. Looking for someone. Who is he looking for? Yi Yunyan replied. Telling me to find a very beautiful girl. Yi Yunyan told Meng Xing about the girl described by the beggar young man. This should be talking about Sumanman, right? Meng Xing's eyes gradually turned cold. Sumanman went shopping yesterday and encountered a fly and was followed. Sumanman is the most important member of the hunter guild, no one else. Meng Xing will definitely eradicate anyone or anything that is detrimental to Sumanman himself and his work. Meng Xing took out his cell phone and sent Huang Jia a message. There was no need to wait for a reply, Meng Xing continued to sketch his blueprint in his notebook. Night. The young beggar walked to the park in a daze and sat down next to the old beggar. Today he didn't wait for the girl who haunted him in his dreams. The old beggar was feeding the cat. When he saw the young beggar coming back, his face darkened and he asked. Did you go to that cafe again? The young beggar was stunned for a moment, then shook his head in denial. How could it be possible? Master, if you don't let me go, how could I still go? The old beggar kicked the young man to the ground and cursed. Yi Chen. You can even deceive me now, right? The young beggar was kicked and blinded. How did the master know which coffee shop he went to? The meowing of the cat next to the old beggar's trouser legs attracted Yi Chen's attention. He had seen this cat at the coffee shop today. He has always suspected that his master has the ability to control animals and can talk to animals. Yi Chen patted his butt and stood up, saying angrily. What happened to that cafe? I, Yi Chen, have an unlimited future and I can't go anywhere. Quote. Yi Chen's parents died when he was young. After he came out of the orphanage at the age of 12, he was coaxed by an old beggar with a piece of candy to become a closed disciple. He is indeed a genius. He has cultivated six levels of spirituality in a few years. On the day he turned 18, he awakened his D-level combat talent. Despite his shabby clothes, his talent alone is enough to crush the top students in key high schools. Coupled with the inheritance of the old beggar, he can indeed become a strong man in the future. This is exactly the protagonist template in Shuangwa novels. This is also the capital of his arrogance. The old beggar was so angry that he almost lost his breath. His hand pointing at Yi Chen trembled for a long time. You have no idea what that cafe is like. Devil's Cave. Do you understand the magic cave? 
That girl's beauty is comparable to that of a celestial being. She is most likely the beloved of a big shot. How dare you accuse her? Quote. Yi Chen was not only not afraid when he heard this, he was even a little excited. The forbidden love of a big shot. Being poisoned by the online novel, he immediately imagined a picture in his mind. A peerless beauty was abducted by a powerful and wretched old devil, and she was kept in a cage and turned into a canary, waiting to be taken out of the devil's cave by a strong young man. The heroine in the novel. This, isn't this coming. Yi Chen suddenly felt that his wonderful life was about to come. Yi Chen clenched his fists excitedly, his eyes flashed like stars, and a wild smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. So what, I, Yi Chen, am determined to be invincible in the world, and all evil heretics are my stepping stones. I am determined to defeat this woman. The old beggar rolled his eyes and almost fell to the ground. He sat back on the park bench and beat his head, lamenting in despair. Idiot. You are such a big idiot. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.